Michigan is stunned. Lloyd Carr is the new head coach. This is one of the saddest days of my life because um, my friend Gary Moeller, a man that I have great uh, respect for, admiration, and love, is uh, no longer here. You talk about pressure, and you have no idea what pressure is. Trust me. I'm thinking about uh, one thing, and that's this season. And uh, I want what's best for Michigan. That was earlier this summer. And now, even before the leaves turn, the Lloyd Carr era has begun here at the University of Michigan with a crowd in excess of 100,000 on hand in the big house. ABC Sports welcomes you and Lloyd Carr to the return of college football. It's the Pigskin Classic. The University of Virginia comes to Ann Arbor to take on the Wolverines. Good afternoon and welcome, everybody, with Dick Vermeil. I'm Brent Musburger. Nice to have you with us. I guess, Coach, the only thing better than college football is more college football. You bet. And if it seems early, it is. But we're glad to be here. Nice to have you with us. Dick, let me ask you about Lloyd Carr. Will there be a lot of changes with the football team with Gary Moeller gone? Well, Brent, you know, Lloyd Carr has been a defensive coach here for 15 years, most of which he spent coordinating the defense. Now, he jokingly said the other day the first smart decision he made as head coach was to fire that defensive coordinator. But you will see some defensive changes. They're going to a variation of the 4-3 defense, which a lot of colleges are doing right now. That'll be different. Offensively, they're making the game a little bit easier. They're shortening up the passing game. More variety of formations, though, and more use of motion. Certainly no dramatic coaching change in Virginia. George Welsh has done a wonderful job down there. 14th year at Virginia, and he comes in here with a pretty good football team, Coach. Very good team. I spent Wednesday down there and watched them practice, talk to all the coaches and a number of players. They feel they will be a better football team than last year and ladies and gentlemen they won nine games last year their concern is though can they come in and play physical football with the teams like michigan right here for four quarters that's their concern all right so it's a good matchup of the acc against the big ten it's virginia michigan the kickoff is coming up on abc one of the grand traditions in college football, the entrance of the Wolverines of Michigan. And here comes Lloyd Carr. He'll touch the banner, and we go down to our colleague Jack Arud, who is with us. Jack? Well, Brent, in normal circumstances, I couldn't even be standing where I am in front of the student section. It's a little thin today, and there's two reasons. Normally, you'd be hit with marshmallows standing here, but this is the earliest that a game has ever been played in Ann Arbor. In fact, it's the earliest both for the Wolverines and the Cavaliers. It ties an NCAA record. One major change. This time, the Michigan Wolverines had to sell tickets. They actually had to advertise, but they've got 100,000 plus. The downside, Brent, it has not been a good day for ticket scalpers. Ah, uh, Jack is down there in the sunshine. Folks here in Ann Arbor, they just had the first coin toss of the new season. Cavalier is winning that, and they will defer under Coach Welsh, which means that Michigan will take the ball first, and they will go on the attack, and we'll have an opportunity to see what the Wolverines are going to present offensively this year under Lloyd Carr. Dick, any ideas to what his strategy will be in a game? Looking ahead, he has a big one down in Champaign next week against Illinois, a conference game for the Wolverines. Well, they want to come out here in this ballgame, especially on offense, and take some pressure off Scott Drysback, their new freshman quarterback, has not played a, a one snap of football here in this stadium. So they're going to simplify the offense. They'd like to pound on him as much as they can, mix in the passing game, and when they go to the drop-back passing game, Brent, you'll notice him throwing the quick pass, the three and the five-step drop. And right away, we get an opportunity to see one of the brightest newcomers at the University of Michigan. One of the return men, and putting the ball down on the tee, Rafael Garcia. And there you see on the right-hand side, number 33. Remember that number, ladies and gentlemen, Clarence Williams. He is a freshman. And the coaches here in Ann Arbor cannot wait to put the football in his hands today as a running back and also a return man. He's also back with a veteran who's a pretty good one on the other side. Number nine, Mercury Hayes. And here is Garcia. 
His parents are here from Barcelona, Spain, watching him for the first time. The left foot kick off, and the 95 season is underway, and Williams will take a knee. The veteran comes over and says, I know you want to run it out, Clarence, but just put it down right there, and we'll bring it on out on the 20-yard line. Now, here's the new quarterback Dick Vermeil referred to, and it is Dries Buck. That's how you pronounce his name, out of Indiana, number 12, and Chili's presents the starting lineups and there's the skilled players for the Wolverines Dick the real skilled one is Amani Toomer fine fine wide receiver the offensive line Rod Payne has been nicked but he's back to anchor this good group here two great big offensive tackles the Akabatuka and immediately they start with the fullback Chris Floyd at number seven gets the first carry of the game we were expecting to see Bianca Batuka but instead the Wolverines will come with Floyd now here's the defensive line coach well it's led by Dwayne Ashman he's really the journeyman of that group and how about the linebackers two great outside linebackers and Ferrier and Sharper very fine players Rodney Barber number 19 one of the twins intercepted eight passes so Floyd for six yards on first carry and there is a whistle the officiating crew here today is a Big Ten group coming to call this pigskin classic this is the first time that the pigskin classic has been played on campus and for the first time they got a healthy crowd ball, ball, ball start offense repeat second down first penalty of the new season won't be the last Lloyd Carr for, you know, I saw him on Thursday, but he was still pretty relaxed, but he was tightening up on Friday. After the five-yard penalty, the ball back to the 21, it's second and nine. Dries box first pass is low to Toomer. Reached down at the 25-yard line with Joe Pucker crawling on him there. Well, as demonstrated by that reception, Toomer can catch the ball anywhere it's thrown, over the top of him, behind him, in front of him, and right down to the shoe stops. He's a fine, fine talent. Big question is, do the Wolverines have a quarterback who can get the ball into his hands? He's going to be a candidate for the Bolitnikoff Award, which was won by Ingram of Penn State a year ago, as the best receiver in the land. Third and five for the Wolverines. Dreisbach to put it up again. First down, Mercury Hayes, the receiver. See, now this is a variation they didn't use a lot of last year. They go to a five-step drop. Now they have to get rid of the ball quickly in a five-step drop. One, two, three, four, five, and throw it. The big thing you have to do when you set up in a five-step drop is set up and let it go. Good pass protection, good throw on that inside curl pattern to Hayes. And, boy, I think that's a good reliever right there for Scott Dreisbach. Dreisbach 2-2. Two two. That was for 13 yards. They give him a package of three wide receivers. The Akabatuka runs the delay out of that. Look at the Akabatuka with daylight. Out of bounds at the 42-yard line. First down. Kamunga, the Akabatuka, 20 yards. Rick Lance's defense at Virginia, they're attacking defense, so you run, slow them down by running the draw. This time, John Runyon, right over here, does a good job of getting the defensive end upfield, and they run underneath that wide pass rush. Here we go, see him set, take him to the outside. There's a big, big hole, good block by the receiver. Now, the Akapatuka demonstrating his running skills. Floyd is offset as the fullback. They'll run behind him with Bianca Batuka, and this time, Crocker was ready. Number four. Good defense by Jamie Sharper. Chris Floyd, the fullback, led that play and tried to cut black the linebacker, and the linebacker being such a good linebacker and good athlete, he jumped right over that block and made the play. Jermaine Tuman checks in at tight end for the Wolverines, giving them a double tight end look. And now on second and 12, Reimersma goes in motion to the right side. He is still perfect. And the young man who just checked in for his first play of the game 
Kuman making the catch, and the Wolverines behind Drosbach are moving the chains again. They used the man in motion this time to stretch the defense inside. That opened up that little zone. You'll see a man in motion right here. He's going here. That opens up the zone inside. Two men right there. Big hole in that zone right there. Good execution. Again, throwing quickly. The Wolverines showing more one back, and now there is movement down there on the line, and the flags come flying. Chris Howard, number eight, is in as the lone running back in this set, and they have given... Dick, are you surprised as to how the young quarterback has opened things up here on the first series the way he has? Well, I'm, I'm not, in that they're not asking him to throw difficult balls. Right? They're very intelligent approached by offensive coordinator Fred Jackson. Just dink passing six, seven yards downfield, and that'll build his confidence, and then it gradually we'll probably see him throw more difficult throws. Butterfield slotted to the left. Howard, his first call, and the Cavaliers were ready. John Harris, number 98 from Inwood, New York, led the defensive charge that time. Big John running at number 69, the offensive left tackle, is really happy to be back at left tackle. Last year he had to play guard. There he is in the middle of your screen, and when he locks his pads onto you, he is going to move you. Ladies and gentlemen, he's six foot nine, 300 pounds. That's a man. Second and 13. The ball at the Virginia 31-yard line. Opening drive of the Pigskin Classic. Dreisbach with a lot of time. Throws up underneath for the 26-yard line that time. And that will still leave the Wolverines with a third and long as they come back to Tumor underneath. And James Ferrier, one of the talented linebackers, in on the coverage. You mentioned third and long, Brent. Last year, it's one of the poorest things Michigan did offensively. They set a school record for the lowest percentage of third down conversion last year at 37%. They want to improve that. Third and nine, third and eight is tough to, tough to convert, though. Diaka Batuka is the running back. Three wide receivers. Hayes out to the left. Butterfield, the motion receiver. Getting time incomplete. He threw behind the receiver. That would have not have been a first down. Virginia had it well covered now. And, and Remy Hamilton trots onto the field to attempt a field goal, Coach. Did you notice Dreisbach goes over and talks to the receiver? Dreisbach read the zone. The receiver was bracketed outside. He should have stopped in that zone. He didn't. He kept going, Brent. There have been questions about Hamilton. You watched him in practice. He was a little bit shaky. Let's Very see shaky. how he handles this first one. It would be a big boost to his confidence level if he could make this one, Brent. He did not kick well in the scrimmage last week either. 43-yard field goal attempt. Not close. And that's how he kicked last week. He missed two in the scrimmage, and then Thursday's practice, he did not kick well. So it'll be the Cavaliers' ball under Coach Welsh when we return. Here is Mike Groh, number 13. His daddy, Al, is the defensive coordinator under Bill Parcells with the New England Patriots. As you might expect, the son of a coach and very intelligent young man. In today's lineups brought to you by Chili's. And there's a change of wide receiver for the Cavaliers, Dick. Yeah, Patrick Jefferson, their starting split in, will not play today, and that's a big loss. He's their number one guy. Standout, book in, offensive tackles. Both playing a game today as graduate students. Both graduated already. There's another 21 to watch, and that's Tiki Barber, who starts as the tailback. Rowe will let him on the first carry. There's a penalty flag down, and Tiki Barber for a strong eight yards, but there is a penalty flag thrown by the linesman on the other side. Illegal motion. Illegal motion. Offense, five yards, repeat first down. We've had our first reverb. <laughs> And defensively, here's the big change for the Wolverines. This year, they will use the 4-3, Dick. Yeah, and led by Trent Sinkowitz. We really respected his play last year, and he'll start strong today. Jared Irons, the middle linebacker, number 37. He's a dandy. The defensive backfield must improve over a year ago. So now it is first and 15 after the five-yard penalty. 
here comes Barber again out to the 27 yard line. Let's check in now with Jack Arood on the Cavaliers, Jack. Well, Brent, these two teams have only met twice before in history, once back in 1899 and once back in 1971. And you would think if you'd never been, if you'd never beaten the Michigan Wolverines and the combined margin of victory was 89 points, you might have a problem. But consider this fact. Nobody on this team was born in 1971. They don't know anything about the old games. <laughs> Love those shades, by the way, Jack. You look real cool down there today, fellow. Second and nine now for Grow and the Cavaliers. Over the middle to the 32. This will be short of the first down. Jared Irons with his first pop of the game. Dick, Jared Irons' father and a brother dropped by earlier to see us. And uh, there's a young man that uh, can make a father and a mother awfully, awfully proud. You bet he's, he's an outstanding linebacker, as we've already said to Brent, but... You know, he wants to graduate in May, which he will. Then he's going to stay another year and work on his master's degree before he enters into pro football, and he will play in the NFL. Two schools with excellent academic records meeting in this pigskin classic. Both have done it the right way through the years. Out of the shotgun, throw comes underneath the Crowell, who has replaced Jeffers, and that should be enough for a first down. Everybody going to that short, underneath passing a game against those zone coverage. Crossing pattern in front of the linebackers. You mentioned uh, Jared, and we asked him about the senior leadership on this Michigan team and what it will mean, and here's what he had to say. Take one game at a time and, and go out there and play hard and have fun. The, the key to this season is having fun. In the seasons before, you could tell we were kind of tentative, and, tentative uh, and, and not as aggressive as we should be. This year, we just go out there and have fun and fly around. I'll tell you who won't have fun, and that's the running backs when you run into number 37. Here's a man right now, write it down. He's one of the favorites for the Vegas Award. Irons, number 37. When you go to the 4-3, you funnel a lot of things back to your middle linebacker, and the Wolverines are blessed with a dandy. He takes the defensive signals for the sideline, passes him on in the huddle. He's the quarterback. He's the player that Grow must be extremely conscious of today, along with the safeties. It's now second and 11 for the Virginia quarterback. Down the sideline, deep and incomplete. Incidental contact at the 25-yard line. Clarence Thompson with the coverage on Jermaine Crowell. Very good coverage. And Brent, and you notice that they're shifting the tight end around. See, they had that in the game plan, anticipating Michigan's older defense. They probably will get away from that soon. Right-hand corner of your screen. Good coverage all the way by Clarence Thompson. Right in good position. And covering a receiver that is six foot five. Good job. Now to 37. It's third down and 11 for the Cavaliers. Penalty flag. The right offensive tackle standing up to look back at Grove, who was back in the shotgun. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Jimmy Springer. A pack 10 referee is in here. I think I said earlier this was a Big Ten crew. I'm so accustomed to coming into the big house with a Big Ten group of officials. These are all pack 10 officials. The umpire is Dave McCullough. So it is third and 16. defensive charge. Good pressure on him by Rashid Simmons from the inside. He actually had people hanging on him when he threw the ball, and then real good defensive pass reaction. Come up and make the hit when they catch the ball. Shotgun high snap. That, that really is a distraction for the quarterback. Good place. Michael's sitting in there. He's getting flushed. Right there, he throws it out to right, complete, but bang. Good tackle by Water. Winners. You're about to watch one of the best punters in the land. This is Bill Price, number 10. He is a candidate for all ACC, all American honors, left-footed punter, and he's got a good return man. Zoomer, fair catch at the 30-yard line where it'll be Michigan's ball. Warm August day in Ann Arbor. The college season underway, and we are scoreless. The Big Skin Classic on ABC, brought to you by Windows 95 from Microsoft. 
Where do you want to go today? Taste picante sauce and taste thick and chunky salsa. Taste knows what Mexican sauce should taste like. Beechwood Age, Budweiser, the king of beers. This bud's for you. And Full View TV, offering up to 350 channels. Full View TV, the satellite system with the best view. Dick Vermeil and Jack Arood, I'm Brad Musburger, Ann Arbor, Michigan. This is the opening weekend. Tomorrow, Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan will be in the Meadowlands for the kickoff classic, Ohio State and Boston College. Here it's Michigan, their second attempt, the Akamatuka. Got him no more than a yard with Steve King of Riviera Beach, Florida, bringing him down the free safety. Boy, Jamie Sharper did an awfully nice job that time from his right linebacker spot of filling that hole. They were going to try to lead block on him, and he fills right here, and they couldn't make the block. He forced the play to go outside. He attacks the play, attacks the blocker. He doesn't make the tackle, but he ruins the play. Good job, Jamie. Yeah, the Wolverines... Trying to get that running game going. Eisbach, complete. And again, he comes right back to number 80. Brown Tuman with his second reception and Barber making the stop. And a reminder that coming up next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, our country's young stars from Spring, Texas, take on Taiwan in the championship game of the Little League World Series. Presented by Pace. That's coming up next here on ABC Sports from Williamsport, PA. One of the rights of summer, the Little League Championship game. Now it is third and short. And so Chris Floyd in at fullback as a lead blocker. And let's see if the Wolverines they put it in the Akamatuka's hands. First down, Michigan. Midfield, strong run. Great bounce outside ability. Now, we noticed that last year, Brent, and actually really noticed it when he got down inside that 10-yard line area. He could really find that end zone. He loves to run in the intense areas. And in short yardage, that's an intense situation. Takes the ball deep. Boy, that's an advantage. Seems stutter step, break to the outside. Now you've got to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. That's a mismatch most of the time. down, the Wolverines with three wide receivers. Reisbach will throw it down the sideline high and incomplete over Hayes' head. I believe that because Mercury was so well covered over there by Barber that the youngster just decided to take it out of bounds and not risk an interception on that sideline. Perhaps a wise decision when you consider that Barber intercepted eight passes a year ago. You know, and that's a good decision too, Brent. Uh, the number one thing an inexperienced quarterback has to do is allow the other ten people to help him win the football game and not try to win the game on any one play. Utilize your talent, and they do have talent. Reisbach is 6'4", 192 pounds, redshirt freshman. He did travel last year in all the Wolverine games. Bianca Batuka on the delay for a couple of yards. And Todd White of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, makes the stop for the Cavaliers. Todd White was the most improved player last year for the 94 season. He is one of the two experienced defensive linemen back to play for this defensive team. Dwayne Ashland, the other one, is the leader of the defense. But, but Todd White, they expect big things of him this year. Played very well last year. Monty Toomer, who would be the big play wide receiver, goes off to Scott's right. Mercury Hayes is down to his left. They'll swing it to the fullback Floyd, and he is short of a first down. And that was Sharper and Barber. Oh, you've got to be impressed with number 19, Barber. All ACC a year ago, and uh, he's stuck in bigger prey this year. Yeah, Amani Toomer at the top of the screen. He wanted the football thrown to him. He's up there. They're playing a zone. They roll up. He settles down in the hole of the zone, but they decide to go the other way with the ball. Maybe the poor decision. So it is Craig Baker into punch for the Wolverines. This is something they didn't do real well last year. Brent. And Barber's twin, Tiki Barber, the running back, back deep, low at the 12-yard line, twist to the 13-yard line. Brought down by Diolo Anderson out of Youngstown, Ohio. So we'll take a break. We're scoreless in Ann Arbor. 
Mike Groves out of Randolph, New Jersey. He did more than just play quarterback when he was back in high school. Here he is. He's the field goal kicker. This is for the Group 4 championship against Montclair, number 13. Is it good? You bet it is. Hey, nothing more exciting than high school football. Having been in that atmosphere, Brent, I can really relate to that enthusiasm. Now the young man who replaced Simeon Willis, who went out with pulled hamstring muscle injury, and Groh never couldn't let him back into that lineup. He beat him out of the job, took Virginia to the Independence Bowl. Tiki Barber smacks a tackle. Barber's a good one. 20, and he gets to the 23-yard line before he's down. So everybody came in thinking about the 21 on the Michigan side, but Virginia's got a 21 also. George Wells told me the other day that Tiki Barber has become a running back. At first at Virginia, he was a track man playing football. He has learned to run inside through spring practice and training camp. He's demonstrating right now that George Welsh knows what he's talking about. He can run inside. That linebacker's got to make the play down there, Coach. And that is he's set it down in one. Throw on that short drop, fires to Crowell for the first down to the 30-yard line. Chris Harrison is their best and most skilled offensive lineman. Now, he missed the full season with a broken ankle in the spring. He's actually playing with a rod in his leg right now. There he is in the middle of your screen, number 56. Good pass protector, good technique man. He gets his arms up underneath, and he's blocking a fine defensive lineman in Zinkowitz. Yeah, it didn't take the Cavaliers coaches long to make a couple of adjustments upstairs watching the Wolverine defense. You can see that Groves a little more confident in this series. Their tight end, Neely, is over on the right-hand side doing a good job of blocking. They'll run in that direction. Barber, though, is not going to get away this time because Chucky Winters is there. And they had the good block, like you said, Brent. A real good block, but they good defense forced them to move to the outside. You'll see them have to bounce to the outside. They do a good job of constricting it here and making it bounce. He closes it. Boom! That's David Bowens, number six, the freshman. Jared Irons, 37, coming inside out. And there's the fill man. Winters puts the hit on him. David Bowens, that freshman number six, he getting an education early out of Pontiac, Michigan, as the Cavaliers working over the youngster. The time running down here in the first quarter of the Pigskin Classic in Ann Arbor. And the tight end, Neely, was wide open. Got to make that play down there, Bobby. Here's a real new defensive maneuver used by Michigan this year. The Alaf Pittsburgh Steelers taking three people down in the middle of the defense. Right here, one, two, three. Now, instead of rushing, they drop out and play pass defense. Tough on a young quarterback. See, they drop out, bring the outside people. Clever maneuver. Third and ten for Groh and the Cavaliers. You can see how the linebackers have loosened up the drop into coverage. Groga gets time, though, and he fires for the first down to the 42, Brian Owen, the receiver. They dropped and played zone. They got the zone. The corners were dropping back. Now you'll see the corners here drop off here. Safety go deep middle. They drop off. Linebackers drop off. He reads it properly. Throws the out in good rhythm. See no out underneath coverage. Good pass protection. Good hold to throw in. Well done. And Grow, very patient, without any pressure in the pocket, standing in there, and a key first down for the Cavaliers. Now the swing to Barber. Barber on a cut against Bowen, and Barber to the 49-yard line. That's six yards on that first down play. Lawrence Thompson makes the stop. The other day, I talked to Frank Zinkowitz on the practice field at 76, the fine defensive lineman. He said what he felt about Virginia was that they were a very smart offensive team because they, they keep doing different things to take the pass rush off you. The draws, the screens, and he says, that really bothers me. He said, good offensive coaching on the part of the Virginia staff. Tiki Barber takes a break, and Kevin Brooks, who led Virginia in rushing. The 741 yards, his first carry on the oh, way, and the Wolverines were all over that spot. Jason Horn, number 94, jumping in there in a hurry. That's that old counter gap play. Michigan runs the same thing. The defense is used to seeing it. When they saw that start to materialize, linebackers took him on. Singletary took him on, and so did Jared Irons. When you know it's coming, hard to run it. Now, Owen and Allen check in. 
as wide receivers for the Cavaliers. Now, they will slot somebody like Owen. Obviously, Owen knows exactly where to camp down for throw and get him a first down. That's what he did the last time. He's over here slotted to the right. And throw now. Blitz. Goes against it one-on-one. -on -one. He's got Crowell another first down. So twice, even though he took a hit that time from Ray Marcus, he completed the pass, and twice on third down, Rowe has converted. When you blitz, you get the man-to-man -man coverage. You'll see the blitz coming from the right side of your screen. Bam! He gets nailed, but he still stands in there and throws the strike. Extremely good poise under pressure. I throws can... the out comeback. Tough to defend that comeback. Regardless, Noble was all over him, but when you're coming back, tough to stop it. I can just hear Pops. Al up there saying, that away. That's a way to do it. Be tough. Stand in that pocket. Take that hit. Get that ball off. First and ten now. Here's a handoff to Brooks, and Brooks had daylight on that side to the 35-yard line, and Woodson making the stop. And now, got a little injury down there, and I believe Chucky Winters. Michigan didn't have 11 men on the field that time either. And he's limping off the field. And as he does that, let me remind everybody that it's special tonight on ABC. First, the Olsen twins from Full House star on their own special mystery on the high seas. Then Leslie Nielsen hosts a hilarious look at the world's funniest commercials. Don't want to miss that. Then 2020's Lynn Shear hosts a revealing review of some of America's most famous women, all tonight on ABC. Tiki Barber, number 21, has returned to the lineup, and he was reaching to the 30 and a first down, and that is a big, big loss for the Wolverines right there with winners out. Well, his backup is a freshman. Uh, he's been, he has 21 starts in his career, so he's been healthy for most of his career. Played baseball a lot, as last spring, so he's a good all-around athlete, and they can't afford to lose that kind of leadership in that secondary. Now, this is what you like about a George Welsh coach team. Very patient. They're very educated. The assistant coaches have made a lot of key moves. They pick up two third downs with Bro hanging tough. It's now first down at the Wolverine 30-yard line. Barber squeezes into the hole to about the 28-yard line. Well, Tom O'Brien, the offensive coordinator for Virginia, said, we're, we, we realize we may not be as physical, but we're still going to come and try to run the football because we can't beat a team throwing the ball 45, 50 times. We want to run the ball so we can then come off those runs with some good, strong play actions. We are not a big drop-back team. Well, the first quarter has come to an end for the Big Skin Classic. The Cavaliers on the move. But it is scoreless, and the Wolverines must replace the injured Chuck Winters. We'll continue. Well, Dick, here's the reason why Marcus Ray, the redshirt freshman, has replaced Chucky Winters. Let's take a look at this injury, and uh, it doesn't appear to be, at least on the surface, serious. He gets an outside-in block low, a legal block, see, right there on the thigh. Now, that normally ends up being a deep thigh bruise. And we see that it is not, as he has checked back into the defensive backfield. They really need his leadership in there. And the Cavaliers on the move. The 12th play coming up. Second down right now. And Groh against an all-out blitz. They throw that screen play. They let him through beautifully. And Derek Bird is brought down by you-know-who. Oh, is it fortunate that he had returned. A very well-conceived play if Winters had still been on the sideline. But with Chucky out there, he was able to read this play, which you think is one of the most lethal in college football. Oh, yeah. They don't run enough screens. Nobody does. Because the offensive lineman can block downfield in front of the screen receiver. See them right down there in front of them there. He gets the tackle right there, but they still advance the ball. Now it's third and two, and you would expect a little muscle football here. Medley is the fullback. Their unbalanced line. They'll run behind Medley with Barber. They're all over him. They jam him up short. William Carr, the nose man, coming right through. William Carr did a real nice job. You know, he's a better football player right now than he was a year ago. Number 96, right-hand corner of your screen. He dropped 20 pounds. He is now quicker. I noticed that in last week's scrimmage tapes. I talked to him about it, and he shows his quickness and his improvement right there. Last year, he may have been a step short. That bobble snap was just enough, wasn't it? And now, the Cavaliers with a field goal chance. And they have Mark got Baker. a good one. Rafael Garcia from Spain. Attended some high school in Virginia. Left-footed. 
on its way, a 40-yarder, no good. So each side with a missed field goal, and it is still scoreless into the second period. That was a 39-yarder officially. You know, he missed that, but he really, I mean, he showed power in that leg, Brent. He really nailed it. Yeah, well, disappointed because that was a good drive. They converted two key third downs in that situation. Nothing to show for it so far. And you can see the numbers here, and they're fairly even in total yards, aren't they, Dick? Well, Brent, you're right on the money in saying the difference right now is Virginia converting those third down situations. Therefore, they're plus in time of possession, as you see at the bottom of your screen. Both teams playing perfect football in no turnovers. Now dry spot goes back to work. On the play fake to Bianca Batuka, they're going. Toomer, they're going for the big play, and it is incomplete. And that was Percy Ellsworth, and he did not allow Toomer much daylight, did it? You know, it's interesting. Lloyd Carr in his first game, Dick, and uh, he told us that it's, it, well, it's just so unknown. You don't know what you're stepping into. Here's what he had to say. Our goal at Michigan is to go to Pasadena to win the Rose Bowl championship. And uh, so this opening game for us in terms of Virginia is uh, very important because our young quarterbacks are going to have the benefit uh, of a game before they go to Champaign and play in front of a loud, noisy crowd. Well, it's not Simeon Rice. That's next week. But it was James Ferrier crawling all over the running back that time. And uh, let's go down now to Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, that was a fact that was not lost on Coach Lou Tepper, the fact that the Wolverines would be able to tee it up before they went to Champaign. In fact, what Tepper did is he lobbied heavily to get into tomorrow's game, the kickoff classic. He came up short, though. <laughs> Wonder if he would have played the Buckeyes. <laughs> It's Ohio State and Boston College, and it's third and 11. They set the screen play, and Howard, and he is upended at the 25-yard line by Joe Crocker. I am very impressed with the tackling being demonstrated by these Cavaliers. This defense makes sure when they hit you that you're going down. Very good point. And talking with the defensive coordinator for Virginia, Rick Lance, he said they've been selling all preseason. They're going in and playing a stadium where Michigan prides themselves in being the best tackling team in the Big Ten. They're going to come into this stadium and out-tackle them. And they've sold that, and right now they're demonstrating it. And Baker. Tiki Barber, fair catch at the 33-yard line. We'll take a break and come back. The college season underway, scoreless in Ann Arbor. You see George Welsh there in the middle, middle of your screen. The other day I asked him his biggest concern in coming into this state, and he said, it's not Michigan, it's my own team. He said, in the last five years, we have not played well in the opener. So he changed up his routine in preparation for this game. So far, it's worked. Brooks gets the fake. Come on! And Mike Groh, the quarterback, was able to regain control. He was under enormous pressure that time. Good, good, strong pass rush. He had that ball out there. It's came, coming off play action. The defense is attacking. Comes right around the outside. Will Carr, 96, does and knocks the ball out. Another look at this. Here he is, right side of your screen. Bowens, number six, flushes him inside, and he's actually the guy that knocks the ball out, but he doesn't come up with the ball. The freshman almost making the big play. They throw the swing pass against the young man out of Brooks, and the Wolverine defense starting to come on. Charles Woodson, the freshman. The tempo has picked up. They're moving quicker right now, Brent. They, at that time, did you see the pursuit of those guys in blue? They really flashed into that screen. Now they have put Grow in a very long. It's third and 18. Let's see if the young man's got an answer for that. Shotgun, one, that'll help him. Now in the middle, intercepted, no, they're saying incomplete. They're saying that Marcus Ray trapped the ball at the 48. I'm going to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, Crowell was open. He was wide open on that play. 
Well, they went to a double zone, meaning both safeties get 50% of the field. They play the outside one quarter, and they get into this hole where they want to get to, but they don't get the ball thrown up high enough. Now, that's where you've got to go against the double zone, right where he had to get it there, but just threw it over the top. And so now, here is our young man, Bryce, hunting again. Mercury Hayes, high snap. Bryce pulls it down. Hayes at the 33, down at the 37-yard line. Paul London making the call. Well, Dick, I guess we've got some, some rule changes in the old game this year. How about these two? Well, a player may now legally throw the ball to the ground, stop the clock. It doesn't have to be the quarterback either. It could be the punter. Brent, also, player, don't fans will notice this. They cannot remove their helmet on the field unless it's an official timeout. They have to be in their bench area. I think it's a good rule, don't you? Absolutely. And uh, second unsportsmanlike conduct foul will lead to a disqualification. And the uh, illegal block can run on into that uh, punter this year. So first and ten. The redshirt freshman handing the ball off to Howard. And so far, Michigan has not shown any kind of a dominating running game. Now, remember, this is a team that sent Tyrone Wheatley to the New York Giants. And I think there was a lot of talk that the Akabatuka would automatically step in and that they were extremely well stocked. The young man that I'm waiting to see back there is number 33 before the second half gets too far along because I think they're just dying to put the ball in his hand. This is Howard again, and he's to the 41-yard line with Skeet Jones, the linebacker from Virginia Beach, one of the three captains of the Cavaliers this year, making the uh, stop for him. You know, they block everybody but him, and he did a nice job of stepping up and filling that hole. It was a huge hole. There was space on either side of him, and he filled in perfectly, Brent. Well, coming up on the Pace Halftime Report, we'll keep it right here in Ann Arbor, and uh, John Saunders has prepared a piece for you on the upcoming college football season. Third down. Guy Fox underneath on one hopper, and uh, that one was very well covered by Crocker. He was all over the wide receiver that time. Great blocking by the tailback and fullback on that play. They had a good rush on him. The running back just cut the rush down, gave him time to throw the football, but didn't throw it well. There is Brian Greasy, the son of our broadcaster Bob who will be working with Keith Jackson tomorrow and uh, Brian a sophomore out of Columbus High School in Miami and there's a good chance we'll see him at quarterback Baker under fire that time Barber the return man slips and jukes his way to the 29 about nine minutes left here in the first half Virginia and Michigan still scoreless Well, there's a reminder for tomorrow, the kickoff classic, Ohio State and Boston College. 2 p.m. Eastern time, 11 o'clock out on the Pacific Network. And then following that, a team of NFL stars take on flag football's national champions on the NFL Air It Out. Always a lot of fun from Universal Studios in Florida. And there are the two backup quarterbacks. Now, Jason Carr, number 13, is the son of the head coach. Lloyd Carr, he's the only returning quarterback with any experience. Remember, this school has had Elvis Gerback, they've had Todd Collins, and now a complete transformation. First and ten for Virginia, and Groh handing it uh, off to the tailback that time. And uh, Rob Sweat makes the hit on Kevin Brooks, who's getting a couple of series here. Rob Sweat played awfully well in the scrimmage a week ago. They scrimmaged a week ago Friday in this Coliseum and, and played an actual game, one team being Virginia, the other team, of course, being Michigan. And he really stood out. Now, he was the Philadelphia Inquirer Player of the Year in Pennsylvania, so he, he came here with great credentials. Off a fake throw. He's up underneath to the tight end. And it was a strong hit by Steve King at the 
35-yard line, and that was Walt Derry, who had just checked in as the other tight end, plays with Neely, who made that catch for the Cavaliers. Both teams, for the most part, are tackling really crisply for this, the first game of the season, Brent. You know, in training camps, you don't get like you used to. Not as much, because you don't have as big a roster anymore. Michigan, a better than a touchdown favorite coming into this game. Third and two. The ball at the 37-yard line. And Grow is going to swing. Couldn't get it off. Battles his way back as Glenn Steele was hanging on for the sack. He wanted to throw the layoff pass to his left. He looked out there, and Rasheed Simmons, a defensive lineman, had peeled off and was in the throwing lane, and he could not throw the football. Therefore, he had to hold on to the ball. By that time, the pressure got there. See, he wanted to throw. Not there. Zinkowitz pushes him up inside, and here comes the guy in a bad mood and puts him down. Now, here comes an opportunity for Will Bryce to bury the Wolverines. He's going to hit this ball around the 25-yard line. Toomer, respecting it, is standing all the way back at the 25-yard line. Oh, As he got a leg, Toomer at the 11 is dancing. Short of the 20-yard line, and that's what having a great punter we got to see that again. we got to see that again. You know, last year... He only gave up 1.6 yards of punt return. That was the best in the country. And this is why he gets the ball up here. I felt like I could reach up and grab it. Left footed and all. He bangs that thing up there. And it, look at Toomey. He's waiting. Get out of here. Get out of here. It finally got there. And here comes the coverage. They do a good job of coming to balance and making the play. And the Toomer did the best he could after a 55 yard punt by Bryce. First down. Hands to the Akita Cooper, who's dancing around to the 23. Brent, check in with uh, Jack Arood on the Michigan quarterback. Jack? Well, Brent, you talked about Scott Drysback last year going to all of the away games, even though he was a red shirt. He did that on his own volition, and the reason was he wanted to learn about the intangibles from his previous quarterback, Todd Collins. He said, the things I was looking at is how he managed things in the huddle, how he reacted on the sidelines. So important game conditioning that he couldn't get his red shirt season. Anthony Williams checks in a wide receiver over there. They tried to trap inside. And they made that trap. Closed it immediately. Very good defensive game plan by Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator and staff. Art Marcos, the secondary coach. Bob Pictol, the defensive end coach. Jerry Peter Kusky, defensive tackle coach. All preparing this defense to play well. You know that the Cavaliers have intercepted at least one pass in 16 straight games. Here's Michigan in a third down situation. We're in a scoreless ball game. You sure get the feeling that there's going to be a turnover. One of these two defenses will give the offense a chance here. Now, Reisbach's going to throw. Has time. And Hayes has got it for the first down. No, there's a fumble. Virginia indicating they got it, but the officials are not agreed yet. And now they're waving it off. Now they're going to say, incomplete. Well, he had his back to us. It was tough to see from here. But a good job by Grosbach of taking advantage of the pass protection. He had a good throwing lane. They did a good job of picking the stunts up inside. Defensive lineman spinning around. He moves up into that hole nicely, fires it to the turn-in pattern. He's got the ball right there. I think they picked his pocket, didn't they, I Coach? I do, too. It looked like they picked it. And Baker. So in the exchange of punts, big advantage for the Cavaliers. Barber, daylight. Barber out of bounds inside the 30-yard line. And there, ladies and gentlemen, is an example of what a putter can do for you. Bryce buries Michigan. They can't get out of the hole. See what happened, there was no contain man coming down to, to the return man's left-hand side. Left-hand side of your screen, you'll see all the blue jerseys are inside white jerseys. Hold it right there, freeze it right there. You see, he's already outside. Now, he's a track man, has national speed, he can fly. You have to have somebody out there turning back inside. Tiki Barber gives him a scoring chance here. A 28-yard return of a 32-yard punt. 
And now throw in the Cavaliers with the ball at the Wolverines 27, and Kevin Brooks is still the running back. Low, short drop, deflected, incomplete. It was hit by Mike Elston. Boy, they were trying to throw the slam in against that zone defense, and Elston's a big, tall guy at 6'4", 220. Did a good job of just batting that away. Sophomore eligibility. Going to be around for a long time. Daryl Medley, the fullback, trots in with the play from Coach Welsh's sideline. Derek Bird, the wide receiver to the right. Crowell slots to that side. Off a play fake, throw. And he hits Bird. Bird just short of the 20-yard line, so this will be about third and four. Someone, somewhere right there in that vicinity for the Cavaliers. You know, Michael Groen, talking with him the other day, he told me that he and his dad, Al Groen, spent the whole summer evaluating and setting every opponent's defense that they were going to play this year, and his dad gave me input in terms of educating them as how those defenses really play. So he came into this year really mature in his thinking on how to attack other teams. Now the key play. Third and exactly four with Tiki Barber back in, and the Cavaliers will... Show a shotgun formation, high snap, throw, brings it down, great save, Carter incomplete. The snap threw off the timing, Jared Irons took the running back as the wide receiver and put the helmet on him. See, whenever you get that high snap in the shotgun, you're in trouble as a quarterback. First advantage of the shotgun is you're back there so you can see. When you have to leap for the ball like that, you lose that advantage. High snap. He's lucky to get that one. Good pressure on him. Turns the throw. That's the one thing the shotgun does allow you to get rid of the ball a little bit quicker. You don't have to drop back to get to that point. So Garcia attempts his second field goal of the afternoon. Ball is put down at the 28-yard line. No good. We're over for three. And that is not like Garcia. Oh, they should not allow these guys to stay in the ball game. It's a bigger, stronger team. They could wear them down in the second half, Brent. Key point. Heat and humidity. Michigan may be a little bit deeper than Virginia. Maybe a factor in the second half. We'll see. Dreisbach incomplete, and he wanted Tumor, who was double teamed. And he should have thrown it to Bianca Batuka out there in the flat. He tried to force the ball in between tight coverage when he had a back out in the flat that's supposed to stretch the coverage. The coverage didn't stretch, so you throw him the ball. Inexperience. Skeet Jones had coverage that time. Second down and ten. Three missed field goals here in the first half. Looking for Bianca Batuka, but going to go deep. Wants Mercury Hayes. Caught it out of bounds. No question about that one. Nice diving reception by Mercury, but all for now. Mercury Hayes is down on in that attempt to catch the ball. Might have knocked his breath out or something, but he's down on the sideline. To the right side of your screen, coming down, you see the ball. He reaches, does a nice shot, and I think he lands on the ball. That's tough. Smash it into those ribs and that belly. Here's a nice good look at this. He pulls it in. Wham! And Tyrone Butterfield, number one, replaces him as a wide receiver. Bianca Batuka is still slotted. They throw for it this time, and Bianca Batuka is all alone coming down the sideline. Out of bounds at the 41-yard line. Michigan's biggest play of the game for 38 yards. Good job of coaching by Fred Jackson, the offensive coordinator. He was open a little while ago on the same pattern, and they tried to force the ball inside. This time, he throws the ball to the layoff man, stretching the zone out here. Here he is at the bottom of your screen. He stretches it real wide. He throws it late to the outside. They're all the way outside the defense. Now you're putting the ball in the hands of a guy that can really run. First down, Wolverine at the Virginia 41-yard line. Chris Howard and George Howell are the Wolverine running backs. 
across Howell and Butterfield there, too. Howell was going to block for Butterfield. Incomplete second and ten. Good, quick delivery, but he's got to keep that nose up on those short passes. When it's going down there like and going low, it's tough for the running backs and the receivers catching those short, quick ones to go down there and get those. Lloyd Carr has done a, a masterful job with the morale of his squad and talking to Bo Schembechler yesterday, he says the morale of the squad is excellent, as good as he's ever seen it here, and he has to uh, give credit to Lloyd Carr. Tuman still the tight end for the Wolverines. Second down and ten. Weisbach throws on the run to Butterfield incomplete. Joe Crocker giving chase number four and it's incomplete. This will be third and ten. The Wolverines, so their first chance here in this quarter, and it's starting to slip away from them. They face a big third down. You know, so far, Brent, I don't think Michigan has done a good job at taking advantage of those two great big offensive tackles and letting them come off the ball and nail people, wear them down a little bit, get the ball back there deep to the running back, and smash at them just a little bit more. Give credit to the defense, though. They're shutting them down. Four for seven on third down. Pretty good for Sunday. Reamer's mob. In it tight end. A lot of experience. Sacked at the 48-yard line. Eddie Robertson, number 55, buries the young quarterback. He got around the outside of John Jensen, the strong side or light offensive tackle, number 77, starting his first game. He's a freshman. He'll come from the left side of your screen. 55, Eddie Robinson is a, a backup tackle. There he comes back underneath him right there. Does a good job. Actually, Jansen got involved with that block late. Nate DeLong. Honey now for the Wolverines. I see Keith Barber maybe bluffing this fair catch, and it goes into the end zone, and it'll come out to the 20-yard line, where Mike Rowe and the Cavaliers will put it in play. So we've got... 3-12 to go in the first half, and uh, Dick, I guess we'd say at this point that the uh, defenses are just a little ahead of the offense. Yeah, no question. I think both defensive staffs are, are going to be very pleased with the performance of their guys, and I think both offensive staffs are going to be disappointed. They're both playing smart, though, than that they have not turned the ball over. And we've had three missed field goals, in case you've just joined us. Two by Virginia, and that's unusual for Rafael Garcia. Jared Irons with another stop. Number 37. Boy, was he impressive to visit with. Virginia's possessions. The only twice with the three times and out. One real strong guy, which ended up in that missed field goal. With that four plays in missed field goal, of course, was following that long punt return. Tiki Barber, behind throw. by Brian Owen, the sophomore from Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. What a nice catch. It was a nice job. They were a bump and run coverage, and Clarence Thompson actually stumbled a little bit initially in coverage, and that gave Owen the little step that he needed. It was a perfect throw by throw. Throw by throw. How do you like that, Brent? <laughs> but he stumbled initially, and when you do that in bump and run, and he threw it where he had to throw it, and Owen went up and got it. That's a 22-yard gain. First down for the Cavaliers. Ball out their own 43-yard line. And now, throw. Keeps it. And he's close to another first down. I believe he may have it. I believe that's about an 11-yard run for the Virginia quarterback. If there is a weakness in the 4-3 defense, it's outside there and those two flats. Because all three linebackers are basically lined up inside on most of the defensive front. So once you get outside, those linebackers have to come inside out to make the plays. And Rashid Simmons, a young man who was redshirted a year ago. Valley, who young out of Edison, New Jersey, is brought off the field that time, number 55. Let the quarterback get loose that time, and it's first and ten. Now Grove. And Grove buried. It'll be second and ten. And uh, 
Jack, uh, a little medical attention down there on that Wolverine sideline. Well, let's check in and update you first on Hayes. He is okay. They washed his eyes out. But Tim Biakabatuka, they've been working on him quite extensively. It seemed he bruised his right shoulder. So the crew is taking him over to the medical side of things, and they're going to ice it down. But they don't want to let too much out about Bianca Batuka. But, Brent, you may get your wish yet to see number 33 in this game. Yeah, I, I think that's for sure, even if Bianca Batuka is healthy, Jack. Uh, listen, we had the, the wind knocked out of Mercury Hayes, and did I hear Jack right? They washed his eyes out. That's a new, that's a new remedy for me. <laughs> that's right, yeah. I guess you never know what they're going to come up with that. You know, uh, the Michigan band over there across the way, as we see the uh, folks here who traveled up here for the Cavaliers, and it's nice to see their members of their band here. But that, now, you see that band over there? Now, that's a big, big change, all right? They have taken the Michigan band from behind the Michigan sideline. Folks, they put him over there behind the visitor's bench. And they just can't wait for John Cooper and the Buckeyes to show up. I mean it. Now, let's take a look at what's ahead on ABC. This is incomplete, and you can see number 35, Chucky Winters, flashing into your picture there with uh, coverage on Jerry Bird, and that will leave the Cavaliers with a third and ten, one minute and 51 seconds remaining here in the first half. And again, the second half, well, we're going to show you what's going on in college football. Take a little look ahead. Who are the schools to keep an eye on? The argument has begun. Brand new alliance trying to put together a one and two. USC and Penn State, according to the experts, will have something to say about that before it's over. Third and ten now from the shotgun for Grove. Blitz under pressure, and Winters was all over the receiver that time. He might have had him hooked with his left arm on that one, Brent, from the back. It looked like it from here, but the official didn't call it, so obviously it didn't happen. But it looked like he hooked him with his left arm and then reached around with his right arm and deflected it. Normally, he will get called. Bottom of your screen. Yes, he's got that left. Yeah, he's all right. He's Pretty all close. right. Good. Good. Play. Now, now we're going to watch young Will Bryce again here, and he will attempt again to put Michigan inside the 20-yard line. And we'll see what he can do here. And Toomer is not back, and they go after Bryce, and they get a piece of it. Partially deflected, and that ball's going to go out of bounds. So they put some all-out pressure on him that time, and they get the job done. Ben Steele came from the kicker's right side. Gets a good, clean snap, taking his time. One, two, left-footed punter, hangs it up there, lays it down. Just, I'm not so sure he hit the ball, but he certainly did distract the punter. And the Wolverines get a little daylight as the result of the pressure they put on Bryce. We'll have the pace halftime report here in a minute and a half. So Bianca Batuk is okay. He's in there, and so too Mercury Hayes. He's a wide receiver. First down. Hayes out of bounds again, and that time Dreisbach throwing behind him. And I would think there's a good chance that we will see uh, young Brian Greasy or the son of the Coach Jason Carr do a little quarterbacking here. There's nothing to be real upset with Dreisbach about, but maybe the Wolverines would just like to check out what else they got. They would like to play him, but I'll tell you this. When I watched the scrimmage tapes of the week ago, when I turned off the tapes, I sort of favored Brian Greasy. I thought he moved the team better. Now, of course, I don't see him every day. Well, coaches who do obviously see something here with Scott. And Reamer's mom catches the ball at the 30, short of a first down with James. Well, they, they like box mobility. They compare him favorably to Jim Harbaugh, that kind of, of movement quarterback here at Michigan. Of course, not maybe a strong and armed passer, but that kind of movement can run. You know, we haven't seen him take off. And no. That's perhaps a lack of confidence, don't you think? Just get yeah. a feel for what you can do out there. And also staying within the discipline of the pattern, trying to go all the way through his read. Mm -hmm. Well, let's check in with Jack Aru, Jack. Well, Brent, under normal circumstances, when an opposing team hears about the departure of the coach, they breathe a sigh and they say, gee, that's too bad. But in the case of George Wells, when he heard that Gary Moeller had resigned from the Michigan Wolverines, he knew he had to come up here to Ann Arbor and play against the Wolverines, and he said, 
boy, I'm all messed up now. We've broken down the game tapes. What's going to happen if they go outside of the community and bring in a new head coach? He got his team together, and Welch told all of his assistants, we've got to start all over again. Then a couple of days later, the announcement was, Lloyd Carr is coming in, and George breathed a sigh of relief and said, at least we've got a pretty good idea of what we're going to face in Ann Arbor. And then he said, maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, they, and they have changed. And they have changed. They've changed, but I, I think uh, uh, Virginia's done a good job of adjusting to the changes in the defense. They're attacking it properly, and they expected to see that five-man uh, front uh, slanting defense with the four-linebacker type thing that they played here for years, and they don't see that anymore. But actually, Michigan had played a variation of what they're playing today against Ohio State in, in the end, last game last year. This is a third and three, and they go empty. Four wide receivers. Drives back, and it hits Reimers Ma, the tight end. First down for the Wolverines. Clock will stop, 115, and now Michigan will see what they've got here with the two-minute drill under the young quarterback. And they continue to call plays from the sideline in the two-minute drill for the quarterbacks. Now, they have all three timeouts left, and you better remember that. The Akabatuka is the running back. Reisbach rolling, moves intercepted. This could be bingo for the Cavaliers oh. late. Oh, Rodney Farmer with eight interceptions a year ago and his first here today. And this will give the Cavaliers a late scoring opportunity. You just got the feeling we were going to get a big turnover sooner or later. Well, they moved the quarterback in a rollout to get away from the heavy rush. Here he comes, right out of your screen, gets up. He buys some time. Now he throws. And remember, when you throw, you're pulling people with that throw. Everyone sees you going that direction. The barber is just squatting on that. They haven't gone deep behind Barber. He just squats. He's not worried about going in deep. He jumps it, gets his first interception of the year, 17 games in a row. Watch Reimers, Ma, make the hit right here. Boom! <laughs> maybe he's a linebacker. I mean, this kid was a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, now he's a tight end, and he says, oh, maybe I can play a little linebacker when I go to the NFL. Who knows what's next? Now let's see if the Cavaliers can cash in, play fake throw. Under pressure, throws high, incomplete, and Grove did not want winners picking that pass off. Well, now, let's watch Mr. Reamer's Ma here. Is that Tony? Hey, when someone intercepts the ball, you better not Tony. You better get away. <laughs> Second just down and 10 them. now, and the Cavaliers are trying to get it done. to the 25-yard line. Good wheel and get out of bounds. They only have one timeout left, 42 seconds. If you catch it out in the flat, your intention should be to get outside. Now, yes, the linebacker had him bracketed outside, but try to get down and stop that clock. Save that timeout. That was Neely who did not turn back, and now the Cavaliers need six yards. Will they let Garcia attempt a third field goal here in the first half? Roll would like the first down. Wide open. Got it. At the two, it's first and goal, and it was the big tight end, the senior from Atlanta, Georgia, Bobby Neely, rolling wide open. See, they rolled up a zone over to his side, corner short, safety deep, he burst inside and went in deep. They pulled the man in front of the corner to hold him there, to the right side of your screen, see, and he goes in behind the rolled up corner. 17, Clarence Thompson. Good execution, good play call by Pat O'Brien. Now Tiki Barber is in behind Medley, the fullback. At first and goal for the Cavaliers. Grove, touchdown, Virginia. The Cavaliers strike first. The interception, the key play of the first half. Still 16 seconds to go. Garcia trots on for Coach Walsh to attempt the extra point. They are not an option team, but they will run it down here. They don't want him to run the ball very much, but he's only a foot or two away from that goal line, and he gets it in there. Doesn't miss this one. It's seven zip. That is a big boost emotionally to go in the side, go in the locker room at halftime, seven-point lead. Big boost. Jack Root. 
tell you a story. Virginia now has scored in a school record 129 consecutive games. That means the last time that they went scoreless was a 56-0 drubbing at the hands of Clemson. Get this back in 1984. You know, Jack, we're looking at Coach Welsh right now. Let me tell you something. That man may be the most underrated, outstanding coach in the United States. To go to a school like Virginia and put the show on the road the way he did, but go back further in the man's career. That was a winning coach at Annapolis. He had Navy winning football games. The man can flat out coach, and he doesn't get the credit he deserves. Well said, Brent. You know, when you talk about the great coaches and who the best is, you can't pin it down, but when you carry on that conversation, you have to include this man in that conversation. Now Garcia. Kick it off. Oh, the poacher. They do not want William handling this ball. And 15 seconds left on the clock for Michigan. Michigan has all three timeouts left. You know, I'm not so sure I would have uh, kicked off like that. Oh, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I you don't want Toomer or William yeah, coming no. at you with that speed, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, I, mean, I, yeah, I, I agree with what Virginia did. Yeah. Let him, let him say 70 yards. If the quarterback has not indicated that he's going to beat you with a long pass. Good point. Good point. I don't think I want Toomer loose. And I know that that young freshman is waiting to explode over. That would be my feeling. Well, you've been held on offensive coordinator. No, <laughs> no. They'd run me out of town on a rail. <laughs> I'd be giving away too many Cadillacs. No, wait a minute. I... <laughs> you feel down. sorry for every kid who didn't have a car. Oh, I know. You got that. <laughs> I'm on a good side. They aren't going to like that. They took a knee. Yeah. So that's it. And the Virginia Cavaliers, an underdog in the Pigskin Classic, will take a 7 nothing lead into the locker room. Back with a good halftime report from John Saunders in a moment. The Pigskin Classic on ABC Sports. Brought to you by Pace Picante Sauce and Pace Thick and Chunky Salsa. Pace knows what Mexican sauce should taste like. And Windows 95 from Microsoft. Where do you want to go today? We'll return with halftime activities after these messages and a word from our Pace Picante Sauce and Pace Thick and Chunky Salsa. Pace knows what Mexican sauce should taste like. Here now, Brent Musburger. Well, we've had a first half, and it is 7-0. Here with Virginia leading now by a touchdown, but it's not officially a new season until we see the marching band of the University of Michigan. These youngsters were out at 8 o'clock this morning, practiced for an hour and a half before they came over, and they'll light this crowd up again with the victors. And what a schedule we've got planned for you in the weeks ahead at ABC. Take a look at the doubleheader. Michigan goes down to Champaign to take on Illinois. Florida State Duke, LSU, Texas A&M, Arizona State, Washington. Then we'll split the country up at night. And what two attractive matchups there. The Hurricanes go west to the Rose Bowl to take on UCLA. And Colorado will come into Madison, Wisconsin to take on the Badgers all next Saturday. And what a season we've got ahead of us here on college football. Who's going to win? Who's going to wind up on probation? Who's going to capture the Heisman Trophy? All those issues we'll discuss in the weeks ahead. John Saunders sat down a short time ago, and he took us all back to school on this upcoming college football season. Welcome, everyone, to College Football 101. There's plenty of catching up to do and lessons to be learned. Our first lesson has to do with controversy. Controversy was definitely the theme of this offseason, and three of college football's best teams were caught in the midst. Gary Moeller's resignation as head coach after his April disorderly conduct arrest threw the normally consistent Michigan football program into chaos. Former defensive coordinator Lloyd Carr now has the task of bringing the Wolverines their first national title in 47 years. The controversy continued well into the summer when the Alabama Crimson Tide was placed on three years probation and banned from playing in a bowl game this season. The penalties imposed by the Committee on Infractions are excessive and inappropriate. In its glorious history, Alabama had never been penalized by the NCAA. But an investigation found that former players Gene Jelts and Antonio Langham had received illegal funding. We will appeal. 
controversy is no stranger to the Miami Hurricanes. The specter of possible NCAA punishment continues to loom over the program as Butch Davis returns to Miami after six seasons as a Dallas Cowboys assistant. Years of player arrest, financial impropriety, and unethical conduct seem to be catching up to the Hurricanes, and Davis may be forced to deal with the ramifications. Some teams have already learned their lesson. The hard way. 1995 will feature two national title contenders, Auburn and Texas A&M, finally free from the restrictions of probation. Auburn coach Terry Bowden, with a record of 20 wins, one loss, and one tie in his two seasons, hopes to lead the Tigers to their first bowl game in five years. And A&M coach R.C. Slocum is preparing the Aggies for a run at the national championship. Florida State. USC. Nebraska. Keep an eye on these teams and players. Frazier. Phillips. Hollis. Rice. For the fourth time in eight years, Florida State tops the preseason Associated Press poll. But Bobby Bowden's Seminoles aren't the overwhelming favorite they were two years ago. Because teams like USC, Penn State, Florida, and defending national champion Nebraska all should compete for the top of the poll. And players such as Notre Dame quarterback Ron Paulus, Nebraska quarterback Tommy Frazier, and running back Lawrence Phillips, Illinois linebacker Simeon Rice, and Auburn tailback Stephen Davis are all expected to compete for the Heisman Trophy. Now. Let's make sure we have our coaching changes straight. Among the 21 Division I-A coaching changes this offseason was Howard Schnellenberger's move from Louisville to Oklahoma, where he'll try to revive a struggling Sooner program. The task of getting the Ducks back to the Rose Bowl and replacing NFL-bound coach Rich Brooks will fall to 44-year-old Mike Bellotti. We didn't play as well in the Rose Bowl as we wanted. We thought we were capable of it. I think our players have worked very hard to want to get back there and do it right this next time. 34-year-old Rick Neuheisel will take the reins in Colorado. And Tyrone Willingham will follow in the footsteps of the legendary Bill Walsh at Stanford. I won't try to live up to uh, the standards that, that Bill has set in terms of being a genius and, and being as productive or being a coach he is, but simply come in and put the, the focus on winning. So welcome back, everyone. I hope you're looking forward to the season. Seeing that schoolroom reminds us that these are student athletes, and every now and then we run into a chair at Irons, and what a positive story that is for college football. No question, he is a pro prospect right now. He could come out at the end of this year as senior year, but he has another year because he redshirted. And his intent is to stay in school, let the school football scholarship pay for his college education, continue, and then go on to the national football league. Bright young man, good guidance by his parents. Uh, we are blessed with two schools here who do it the right way, Virginia and Michigan. And we're going to continue with the Pace Halftime Report on ABC in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody, to the Pace Halftime Report. So one of the rights of summer, when we know it's passing into fall, we move on ABC to Williamsport, Pennsylvania, for one of the grand events of the summer, the Little League World Championship, the United States against Taiwan. Let's go to Terry Gannon for a preview. Terry. All right, Brent, and quite a scene outside of Howard J. Lumley Stadium here in South Williamsport, Pennsylvania. As we get set a little bit later on, the Little League World Series Championship game presented by Pace Foods. Chinese Taipei taking on the team from Spring, Texas. And hi, everyone. I'm Terry Gannon. Welcome to South Williamsport for the 33rd straight year, the championship game of the Little League World Series brought to you here on Wide World of Sports. The team from Spring, Texas has been a gutsy group, twice coming out of the loser's bracket on the road to South Williamsport. Manager Don Turley had some final words of encouragement this morning. Guys, it's been an incredible journey, and the coaching staff, we're all extremely proud of what we've accomplished. We've got one more mission to do. 
We go out there today, the same thing we've been doing, take care of business. We've been saying TCB all along. So let's go out there and pour it all out on the field today. One more time. Taking care of business, something that Taiwan has done as well. Manager Wang Zisan addressing his troops. They have been all business on the field this week here in South Williamsport. Very pleased to have Jimmy Key, one of the outstanding pitchers for the New York Yankees, joining me this year. And Jimmy, you've been a little later. You won a World Series with the Toronto Blue Jays. Getting ready, the preparation. What are they feeling right now? Emotions play a big part in a game of this magnitude, and I think you see the team that handles those emotions the best will be to have the team will have the best chance to win this ball game today. Well, coming up 3.30 Eastern time, a special start. Taiwan trying to win their 16th Little League championship against Spring, Texas. Let's go back to Brent. All right, Terry, nothing better than the Little League championship game, and then tomorrow we're going to send you back to college football. Our colleagues, Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, and Lynn Swan will be covering Ohio State and Boston College. Let's go now to Keith at the Meadowlands for a preview. Keith? Right, it'll be the 13th kickoff classic at Giant Stadium, and it is a good matchup this time around. I think this is one that could go very late before we have a decision. I'm standing here with Coach John Cooper of the Ohio State Buckeyes, who are going to play the Boston College Eagles, and this is going to be a game where the people in the trenches are going to have a lot to say about who wins it. Keith, there's no question about that. We've got great respect for Boston College. They do a great job. They had 47 sacks last year, so they're going to really test our offensive line. And uh, we think we've got some defensive people that can rush the pass. So I think you're right. I think it'll come down to the Battle of the Trenches. Well, I think you've got uh, two defensive ends that are like a cactus rolling downhill. Those guys can play. You're talking about Matt Pincus and uh, Mike Brabel, uh, all Big Ten a year, a year ago as sophomores. They're both of them can, or they're, they're, they're competitors. They're going to compete every day, every play, and that's all you can do. John, you got a veteran quarterback in Hoying. You got a terrific running back in Eddie George. Eddie George gained over 1,400 yards rushing last year, and Bobby's quarterback, our football team, Keith, the 19 victories the last two years. So you're exactly right. I like both of those players. Now tell me who in the world made this schedule you've got. I mean, you've got Boston College, which is a proven quality. Then you've got teams like Washington. You've got Notre Dame. You've got to go on the road at Penn State. At Michigan, you play Illinois. You're, that, that's the toughest schedule I've ever seen for a Big Ten team. It's the toughest schedule I've ever played in my 32nd year of coaching, 19th year starting as a head football coach. But, you know, we got everybody talks about playing a morning game at Time. We got Boston College, and then Washington, and then Pitt, right on down the line, and that's the way it has to be. You, you can't change them. That schedule is in stone, so you better be ready to play. You have a little distraction called Notre Dame, too. Notre Dame comes in our place on the 30th, and uh, then we go to, to Penn State, and then we go to Wisconsin, and then we play everybody else in the Big Ten. The Big Ten's tough again this year. First comes Boston College. That'll be a considerable challenge. Good luck, John. Uh, thank you very much. Coach John Cooper, the Ohio State Buckeyes, who incidentally has signed his contract. The only person who has not signed it is the final signature, the school president, Dr. Gordon Gee. We've got a good ball game tomorrow, Brett. Hope you'll enjoy it. Now let's go back to Ann Arbor. All right, Keith, we look forward to that. And here we got a good one with Virginia leading Michigan. We'll come back and talk with Dick Vermeil about the first half on the Pace Halftime Report. The Pace Halftime Report has been brought to you by Pace Picante Sauce and Pace Thick and Chunky Salsa. Pace knows what Mexican sauce should taste like. This season, Burger King Corporation is teaming up with college football and is proud to announce their college football scholarship fund. Along with their franchisees, they will present $100,000 in scholarships each week for a total donation of $1.3 million. Each week, four $25,000 Burger King Scholar Athlete of the Week awards will be presented. The scholarships will be granted to the general scholarship funds in the names of outstanding college football scholar athletes who excel both on the field and in the classroom. Stay tuned to ABC Sports this season and stop by your local Burger King restaurant for more details. Halftime in the Big Skin Classic, Virginia leading Michigan by seven. What about the Wolverines in the second half? Well, I would expect them to take a little more advantage of the big offensive line and the good running backs and get after them a little bit more physically. I don't. I think we've had a little too much finesse offense personally, but this is the first time I've seen this offense. Key play in the first half was Barber's interception. Set up our only score. He was lurking over here on the sideline. Yeah, the advantage of rolling out is you get out away from the rush but it also pulls the defenders toward your throw. And Ronnie Barber was just squatting, sitting right there. And as you said, he, you know, he intercepted eight last year. Flying defensive back. And a, a poor judgment right there on the throw. Then on third down, Young Grove found his tight end kneeling. They sent him to the corner. Uh, right toward the flag, going toward the end zone. The safety rotates over there to make the play. But he can't get there to break up the play. Good design by the offensive play. 
They kept it himself, put a touch. Yes, he did. Good. And then they come on in right here with the option play, and he runs her in. So that does it. There were three missed field goals, and you can see the numbers. Virginia dominating the time of possession. Yes, and, and really they both had four for ten and third down conversions, but that turnover, as you said, is the difference. And both teams not running the ball real well, but we expected Michigan to be the running team. And maybe the Wolverines will try a new quarterback here in the second half. We'll see when we come back. Ready to start the second half now. Michigan will kick it off to Virginia. Tiki Barber. Back deep, he has 35 total return yards in this game, and we see that Michigan will also use a new kicker on the kickoff. Steely, number 49, with the ball on the tee, and Terrence Wilkins is back deep with Barber. Good kickoff, got it up in the air. Good strong leg, Brent. Back into the end zone, they'll down it right there, and uh, bring it on out to the 20-yard line. I believe that's changed. I think that's a free ball in the NFL, but not in college football. But let's uh, take a look here. You're right, Brent. This are the uh, individual statistics. Grow with three big conversions on third down. The one setting up the game's only touchdown. Rushing, well, we see that Barber with eight carries for 22 yards and uh, receptions. They're spreading it out, and they're doing a pretty good job in that regard without their best wide receiver. They're doing a real good job of that, and they, they always come to run the football. That's their philosophy, but they're mixing that passing game in very intelligently. No turnovers. Barber and Medley are the running backs for the Cavaliers as we start the second half. Barber. Blast to the 27-yard line. Boy, he is really becoming physical running inside. You know, he put on 15 pounds last the last football season. He was 180 pounds last year. He's 195 pounds right now, and he's running with that kind of confidence and authority. He has about 70 total yards in the game. The other 21, Bianca Matuka, was 71, in case you're comparing the two 21s right now. Here is second down for the Cavaliers, and Groh handing it back to Barber, who... Switch to the 29-yard line, and Jared Irons there. You know, Michigan ran a defensive line stunt that time. The, the defensive lineman cross-charged, and the draw went right between the cross-charge. Good reading and running by the running back. Gerald Irons, number 37, reading the draw. He has to hold. He has to hold. Now he slides over inside out and makes the play. They need the 30-yard line for the first down to the Cavaliers. Row keeps it himself, and there's a penalty flag. I think the fullback moved early. Fullback anticipating the snap count, and Medley took an early step, and that's going to dearly cost the Cavaliers because Row had the first down, and Medley was not even helping on it. Michigan had some defensive. Michigan had some young defensive linemen moving around. They didn't get lined up correctly. <laughs> So well, that's now the penalty, they will bring it back on the other side of the 25-yard line. Boy, and the difference between third and one, third and six, Brent, is unbelievable in conversion percentage. It is so much tougher. Does make a little sense. Brian and Owen now off the Cavaliers' sideline. has been a good control receiver. Shotgun look for Grove. And movement again down there. The offensive lineman. Everybody moved except the center that time. Yeah. Uh, Coach Welsh not going to be happy with, with this series. I wonder from the shotgun if the center did not hear the quarterback's command. David Gathman from Philadelphia area, LaSalle High School, didn't make the snap. Other people moved. Shotgun, quarterback further back, maybe he didn't hear it. We'll give him an out on that one. So it started out as third and one, and now it's third and 11. Third down passing, five for eight, nice percentage. Bottle inside handoff. Good look on it. And Barber needs the 30. He's free. Got it. He's gone. Barber. Winners with the angle won't catch him. He's too fast. Barber scores for the Cavaliers. 81 yards on third and 11. Act very, very strong running, Brent. He actually ran over the first tackler. I want to tell you that the little mistake threw off the timing of the defense back here. There's a bobble on the snap right here. Right Got there. Draw and a trap block right there by John Slocum. He bounces outside there. Now, good tack, good running through a tackle. Didn't get the arms around him, and you aren't going to catch this guy from behind. He has that great speed.
speed. State champion with a long jump three times. Great spring in those legs. Dick, that might have been Jared Irons who missed that tackle when he came through the middle that time. And uh, Garcia pounds in his second extra point. And who knows? We could be opening 95 with a little bit of an upset as Barber explodes. Breaking the tackle by Irons and goes 81 yards for the Cavaliers' score. Well, we're back, and here's a bit of a bummer for a Wolverine fan. That was the second longest run from scrimmage against the Michigan defense in history. 81 yards, the longest 98 yards by Darrell Thompson of Minnesota back in 87. All right, here comes the flash. Williams, spinner, and rock. 23-yard line. Well, young Dreisbach still in there, but I don't think we're going to see Bianca Batuka. Are we, Jack, the rest of the way? Brent, Jim Bianca Batuka came back out here on the sidelines just moments ago without his shoulder pads on. We checked with the trainer from the University of Michigan. They said he has a bruised shoulder and will not return to the game. Bad enough being down by 14 points, but now you lose touchdown, Jim. As I said before, who knows? You might see number 33 still get the ball. Yep, and the battle of the 21s goes to Virginia. And in there now, running back is Chris Howard. Three wide receivers. And Howard is ambushed at the 25-yard line. Now, remember what the Barbers, and they are twins, have contributed to this football game. This is twin trouble for the Wolverines. When the Barber goes 81 yards for the touchdown, Rondi with the interception in the first half. Now keep in mind that these two fellas were down to three schools. They were down to Michigan, Clemson, and Virginia as to where to go. They were all set to come up here to Michigan, and guess what? It was snowing, the airport was closed, they never got this far until today. Oh, how that changed the fortunes. Tumor reaches out now, Dex, for a first down for the Wolverines. And, and Greasy has to come out here and start positive. Remember that? Uh, excuse me, I said Greasy. Dreisbach, he has to come out and be positive. He threw that interception at the end of the first half. He's got to come out. He does it. That could give him a little lift right now. <laughs> and it looks like Tiki's receiving a little attention over there on the Virginia sideline. I believe they play William and Mary next, if I remember the Virginia schedule right it is no walk in the park for the Wolverines as Howard battles his way nicely to the 45. This bunch is headed down to Champaign where Simeon Rice and the boys are just sitting down there with their feet up, having a nice cold Coca-Cola, just saying, come on down, Wolverines, love to have you down here in Champaign. And Virginia, of course, anybody in the ACC would love to beat Florida State. The Seminoles are unbeaten in the ACC since joining that conference, and that tends to devalue the ACC. It's a better football conference than you might imagine. The Florida State has been on a different level. It's a first down. No, Tumor took it back the other way, and Crocker rides him out of bounds. They're rolling that coverage up over there toward him. They've got to try to maybe get that ball down the middle a little bit against some of these kind of zones when they don't have a free safety in the middle, Frank. This Howard is a good football player who's replacing Bianca Batuka. I watched him in that scrimmage last Friday. He ran the ball very well. Very good, powerful leg run this guy has. He can pull those legs and tackles. Well, Dreisbach now with Howard and set in that eye formation. Mercury Hayes, the lone wide receiver on third and short. Howard blasts for the first down. Had a little bit of a second effort there after the initial hit, and that may have been enough for the Wolverines. And here comes Clarence Williams, number 33. Remember now, he is a true freshman. And that's the one reason they're hesitating or taking their time to get him into the ball game. They're going to have to come out and measure this. That was not a real good spot, was it, for the... Uh, I don't think it was, Brent. Race. They moved that ball back. But so far, this has been a pretty smooth operating Pac-10 crew, we would say, in this game. And they did just get it. And now, we get a chance to watch one of the most highly touted freshmen in the Big Ten. Here he is, Clarence Williams. He was one of the best-rated running backs to come out of the Midwest. Selected 
Michigan here, and uh, they would dearly love to see an explosion and a little, someone to remind them of one Tyrone week. Three wide receivers to look. Williams, the lone running back. Drives back off a of fake, and it goes deep. Tumor, Tumor double covered, and almost intercepted. That was Ellsworth with a hand on the ball. A dangerous throw into double coverage. Double coverage and pump, and that gets the safety going that way, too. If you're going to pump, pump the other way. Don't pump in the direction of your throw. Top of your screen. Now watch the safeties rotate over. See? Man short, man deep, double coverage. Lucky it was not picked. In comparison, and Groves' side leads by two scores. That interception set up the first touchdown back in the first half. Virginia 14, Michigan nothing here in the second half. Off the draw, Williams to the 47-yard line, his first carry. You know, he ran for 1,500 yards or a little over his senior year, averaged 9.6 yards a carry, scored 24 touchdowns. When he touches the ball on the practice field or in scrimmages, he always looks like he's on the verge of making the big run. He's going to make the would-be tackler miss that first tackle, and if you can't accelerate the swarm around him, he will break a big run. And on third and seven, Chris Howard returns, as we have not seen Ed Davis in that backfield in this game. Drive back over the middle. The Reavers ball had to turn around close to the first down and the spot, I think, is just short. And now there's a penalty. And it, the way the flag was thrown and when it was thrown indicated somebody had a little lip service for the official who objected down there. These big, big Ten guys forget where these officials come from. <laughs> well, these, these fellas traveled in here from the West, West Coast. Short, That's right. Fourth down, unsportsmanlike, offense, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, fourth down. Now, what do we think? Reamers Ma didn't like the spot on this? Let's see what happens here. Reamers Ma is drilled pretty good on the reception. And now Reamers Ma draws the, he drove the flag with what he said to the official. You can see it clearly on your screen now. And the ball is brought all the way back to the Michigan 45. Reamers Ma is a veteran. He shouldn't be losing his cool like that. They had a fourth and issue. Right there. Now it's a long, handling the punting again and some outstanding coverage that time. We'll be right back. Virginia leads at 14 to nothing. Saturday on ABC, all set to go. First and 10 now, the Cavaliers up 14 nothing. The ball at the Virginia 22-yard line. And Grove fakes the Brooks. He's replaced by it under pressure. Sacked at the 9-yard line by Joaquin Fiesel. He wanted to come out on that naked bootleg. Fiesel coming real hard. Didn't fool this freshman. He was coming as fast as he could get there. Right side of your screen, number 90, right on the hash mark, right in the middle, freezer right there. See, he want, they wanted to block him here, he didn't get it, he slips underneath, turns him the other way. Good athletic skill by Fizel. So now it's Kirby in at fullback ahead of Brooks. Brooks to the 14-yard line. See, and you really gain, if they can hold them down here, you really gain offensive uh, field position if they force him to punt the ball down here with a play like that, Brent. Well, here comes the third down defensive package for the Wolverines. And again, we've got Mike Grove. Not again. That's the first time that the uh, quarterback has been shaken up. So they are forced to change. And they send in Tim Sherman, number seven. They might come after this young man on this long third down. He'll hand it off to Brooks, a conservative play with a new quarterback. And that was Marcus Ray bringing him down. And the Cavaliers are forced to punt with the key question about Virginia being the health of Mike Rowe over there on the sideline. Well, Tim Sherman played in seven games for Virginia last year, so he does have some playing experience. His dad is also the wide receiver 
uh, coach. So, uh, you know, he, he's been around football. If he has to come in here and take over this pressure and try to hold on to that lead, he'll have the points to do it. Well, we'll check out now Will Bryce. Mercury Hayes standing back at the Michigan 37. Fair catch as he runs up dangerous on that one. Makes the grab at the uh, 44. Good pair of hands on the part of the wide receiver. And now let's let's check this out. This is Mike Rowe, number 13. Top of your screen, right hand corner. Setting up. Pause. Oh, really can't see. Maybe pull the muscle, Brent, because he, we don't see anything obvious. Let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack, what do you find out? Well, Brent, let's update you on Mike Crow. You're looking at him putting his shoes back on as we speak. Now, what happened is his, his actually his calf muscles began to cramp up. So now what they do is they put a little riser in the back of the heels, a hard piece of rubber, and what that allows him to do is try and take some of the pressure off the calf. After this play, we'll tell you about Tiki as well. Davis is in at running back. Deflected pass incomplete intended for Hayes. And then Jack, what do you hear about uh, number 21, Tiki Barber? Well, the word is not as good for Tiki Barber. He came in, and after that one play where he came out, the doctor told me that he literally had separated his shoulder for a split second. It popped out and then popped back in. They kind of made light about it. In fact, the doctor said to Tiki, hey, it won't bother you again until you go to the end zone, but Tiki has not been back. They've taken his shoulder pads off. They've begun to ice it down. They're a little more concerned than they wanted to let on. So we've got two running backs out with shoulders right now. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a key story as far as Virginia is concerned. There's both 21s now have limped out, and uh, Dreisbach will throw the swing out here to Howell. Fullback is out to the 46-yard line. That is well short of the first down. And Barber, Tiki's twin brother, makes the stop. And he is a real fine defensive back. One interception, good tackler. He's the kind of cover man that they have been avoiding. They've been throwing away from him. And the one time they did challenge him, rolling in that direction, he picked it. You talk about brothers with ability. One's a state champion in the long jump. This guy, Barber, is the state champion in the hurdles real talent playing football now third and seven for the wolverines that's davis stepping in motion dreisbach is going to use the swing man this is howell breaks one tackle but short of the first down and the wolverines are forced to punt and again it was number 19 barber see they want to go the ball downfield to get the first down but the coverage and the underneath coverage is taking the throw away so they have to lay it off then with good pursuit and gang tackling they're preventing the first down real good defense right now being played by the virginia crew they're really doing a good job and rick lance and his staff have to be very pleased now delong will punt for the wolverines and percy ellsworth replaces tiki barber percy a defensive back number 27 pressure high beautiful punt this time that's a nice punt and it's going out of bounds inside the five better than long nice. has just won a job there's a moment for him and bro hopes to check back in the return of college football michigan defense now would love to get his team right back in the thick of things backup quarterback sherman still in the game for the Cavaliers who lead it by two scores. This will be fake to Brooks and he's got it and down right there. Didn't bother anybody with that fake and that was old Joaquin Fizel, number 90, the red shirt freshman who's playing himself a whale of a game here the last few minutes. Well, Joaquin Fizel is a red shirt freshman. He was there all last year, didn't get to play. This is his first football game and he's really playing well. He's excited about it. He's playing fundamentally sound and, and playing within the discipline of the defense. This is a good defensive football team out there. Kirby's the fullback. Brooks is the tailback. Colwell is in motion for the Cavaliers. Brooks is hit immediately by Thompson, who came off the corner at the handoff. He read the play beautifully. They were in an unbalanced line, favoring offensive right, defensive left. They came in motion. Thompson followed him across in man coverage and then blitzed off the corner. 
You'll see Thompson moving left to right. Now he's got the blitz. Here he comes. It's like an outside linebacker. No one accounts for him. An extra man they can't block him. Good defensive call. And with the delay of game penalty against Virginia, the penalty is accepted, and the ball now is marched back to the two-yard line. So it is a long second down for Sherman and the Cavaliers. And Brooks battles. Bumble! Michigan got it! At the 19-yard line, it was Chuck Winters. Here's a chance for the Wolverines. This is what the Wolverines need. It's something to get them fired up. High lead play, just good fundamental football play. He has it secured. Now, Kevin Brooks has not been playing very much, so he's just getting warmed up. Doesn't have the ball secured tight enough right now, and he gets it knocked out there. It goes on the turf. Boom, on the turf. Winters picks it up. Big, big, big turnover, especially in his field position. Bander Lease and Reamers Ma, the tight end. Davis is the running back. Toomer and Hayes, the wide men for Scott Dreisbach, who needs to get something going here. He's audible. It's Davis. Scoops through. Davis, where's he been? To the six-yard line. He's been waiting for his opportunity to play. He's a senior out of Detroit. He's carried the ball 234 times in his career, but he's never been the guy. He's never been able to just take the job and run the football. There he demonstrates he can run. Good block by the tight end going in motion. Gets the kick out block. Reamers Moss, 16, kicks out right there. Excellent block. He runs up through that tackle. Gets his pads down right now, moving toward that goal line. The Cavaliers with five down defensive linemen now. Second down at a yard. Reamers Moy in motion. Davis cut off from behind. And that was Tony Dingle, 89. The extra down lineman here in the goal line looking for the Cavaliers coming around. Now Floyd in at fullback for the Wolverines. This will be third down. They'll need a long yard here. Davis behind the fullback. That was a long yard for a quarterback sneak. Offensive line came off pretty good though in the middle, led by Rod Payne. Got a little push in there. But that's a long way to go for a quarter snack sneak. They must be thinking two downs for the first down to use a quarterback sneak on the first attempt to get the first down. Well, they'll bring the chains out from across the way. See if Young drives back. Skeet Jones, the middle linebacker, is down right now. Maybe with a cramp problem. It's pretty darn hot down there on the field, as we can tell. But looking at our own Jack of Roots perspire down there when we had the camera on. Yeah, and uh, don't forget, speaking of cramps, Mike Rowe, that's a big factor in this game. Right. They were backed up against the goal line. They didn't have their starting quarterback back in there. And Michigan able to force the fumble, recovered by winners. And uh, here is their best scoring opportunity of the day. So it'll be fourth and inches after the measurement. And the play is right ready to go. Well, you have a very strong physical offensive line. And, and so far, you have to give credit to Virginia's defensive line group. They've been playing physical. What do you think tomorrow for the Buckeyes and Boston College? Well, I'll tell you, the Buckeyes have both the running back and quarterback, plus that great big tackle back. Uh, they're going to be a good football team. We didn't get to see Boston College and Dan Henning's team last year, so I don't have a real good feel for it, right? How's that copping out on you? <laughs> I won't ask you about this one. The NFL's favorite in that flag football match. Michigan said, well, let's go right back and see if we can get it this time. So it looks like this time they'll get the first down, and that'll give the Wolverines with a first and goal. Do you remember the great center, Everett, now with the Cleveland Browns? The coaches say that Payne's out of the same mold, and he'll play with a little pain. He's a leverage guy. You can run behind him now. It's just a big pile, but he has to create the movement. And Rod Payne is one of the better centers, if not the best in the country this year. 
Davis and Floyd, the running backs. The toss to Davis, Floyd the lead blocker, Davis couldn't find his daylight, cut off by Joe Pucker who came through. Great, great pursuit by this 4-3 defense. These kids, this linebacker crew, including linebackers, they can fly. Up here, that looks like the play's going to score. Concentrate on the white jerseys. Take on blockers, pursue inside out, moving to the right. The ball is tossed, and look at those white jerseys. Form that blanket along the line of scrimmage. Here they come. No place to go. Great defense. That's good coaching, good fundamental play. This is not that complicated a game. Just fundamentally sound, you can make plays like that. This is second and goal now. Tuman, number 80, in with Van Der Leest at tight end. They fake the draw. Right back rolling. Throws back. It's intercepted in the end zone. Picked off by Percy Ellswood. A dangerous throw coming to the right, back across his body into the middle. You're inviting what happened here, folks. See, Brent, when you're scrambling and you're running to your right, you're pulling defenders with you from a defensive standpoint right to left. And so it makes them really easy to read that throw. Wham, you throw that. You see what I mean? Bootleg now. He's running left. Now watch all white jerseys. They're coming with him inside out on the ball. They're just waiting for him to throw. It's hard for him to see back here now. He's thrown beyond his vision. Poor throw, poor judgment, inexperienced quarterback. That's all. And so now the Cavaliers with a little breathing room. Sherman continuing at quarterback. They lead it by two touchdowns. And Sherman, a little bit of a mishandle on the snap, I believe. And he is forced out of bounds on that far side. Steve King takes him out of bounds. And so Michigan with two very costly interceptions in this game. The first one set up the Cavaliers' first touchdown in the first half. This one snuffs out what was Michigan's best scoring opportunity of the game. Michigan has also missed a field goal. Seen the other point down there, but you throw the interception on second down. You know, there's no good time to throw an interception, but you don't want to throw it on first and second. Cramps starting to get to these young players. You know, it's been very, very hot in Virginia. And being down there on Wednesday, it was hot down there then. But George and his staff said it had been very hot all through most of training camp. And this is Chris Harrison, their best offensive lineman down right now that's got the cramps. And they need this young man. As we said in the introductions, he's graduated from school already. He's going to get his master's degree. Uh, here is Greasy warming up on the uh, sidelines with the injured Cavalier being tended to. And chances are that after that second interception, now this is the first one, and you will watch again somewhat similar, except instead of rolling to the right, this time Dreisbach coming over to the left. And Barber camped right there, made the pick. I've always believed and I can't prove it, Brent, but a quarterback is going to throw more interceptions when he's moving in a direction, pulling defenders with him than he would normally throw if he were straight back with better vision on the coverage. It's at this point in time when there are some assistant coaches on the Wolverines who wish that somebody's got some playing time last year when Todd Collins was getting all the snaps. It is really tough at this level to come in with a youngster who has not experienced anything, what it's like. Things move so quickly for those youngsters. I hope Dreisbach comes back and turns out to be a fine player, but this is asking a whole lot of him. Now, the other thing now in Greasy, if Greasy does come in, he's not the mobile guy. He's a good athlete, but he doesn't move. You may see him move less in the pocket. You may see him more straight back and play action straight back in Inside the pocket. You gotta try to get the ball into Tumor's hand, yeah. Mercury Hayes hands, and get it down the field. If they're your gifted guys, they aren't gifted unless you give them the ball. You got that right. 102 yards in second quarter. Now, Cavaliers would love to saddle up a big running back. Sherman, however, goes deep and it is incomplete. So just when I think they're gonna start to put bang on the clock. Clarence Thompson knocks one down. There's two 16 left here in the third quarter. Shows you what I don't know. I'll tell you what, they're going to try to take advantage of that bump and run coverage, but maybe there's a tendency to play that on first down, and they haven't charged in the press box, so they come with that type of call. Plus, you're throwing to a, a tall receiver. 
Thompson down. And so the fellows are starting to fall a little bit here in the heat and humidity of Ann Arbor. I hope that the, uh, the Meadowlands has a nice, pleasant breeze for the Buckeyes and the Eagles tomorrow. It's good football game. They're on AstroTurf, too, and I'll guarantee it will be a lot harder on, a hot, lot harder and a lot hotter on that turf. You got to use a lot of different rushmen in that situation, don't you, Coach? They, yes, you do, and they've been doing a good job of rotating the defensive linemen in through this ball game. Both sides have been doing it. Now there's a true freshman coming in to play corner right now, number two, Charles Woodson. He's their third corner as a true freshman, outstanding young athlete. USA Today All-American. He was a great running back as well as a defensive back in high school. Uh, this guy has a, a great future, and guess where he's from? Mr. Football in the state of Ohio. How'd they ever let him get him out of there? Huh? Oh, I think it's Kajana Carter. Uh, yeah. Didn't he get away from uh, from him and uh, wind up? Yeah. The, what a shame that was. I I tell you, and nothing was sadder during this preseason of the NFL oh, than to see Kajana Carter go down for the Cincinnati Bengals. He was such a delight last year and uh, such a great running back. And we just, Dick, we wish him nothing but the best. Plus, him. and also a salute to Joe Paterno. Saying, hey, you know, it's the best decision for you to leave school. Yes, you do have another year of eligibility. Let's say he stays at Penn State this year and does that to his knee his first time. Uh, you know, they gave him a few pennies to sign that contract. I'd say. <laughs> and, a, and a tough blow. you make, I think. <laughs> I'd say. A tough blow for the Bengals, too. You know? Very tough blow. They when did. you're counting on a, yeah. on, a, on a game breaker, a guy that can make a difference, and you lose it. And I'll tell you, as a coach, we've all been in those situations formerly, and uh, your heart just shrinks in size when something like that happens. So, so does your mental ability in yeah. terms of a coach, too. Another fellow, you know, we've been talking about Irons. He's hung in here. And how about Simeon Rice? It would be nice to see a defensive player get some push for the Heisman. He'll be taking on Michigan down in Champaign next week. And now Sherman and the Cavaliers on third and 11 line up in the shotgun. Yeah, they might want to come back with that draw trap again. <laughs> Last time it worked for 81 yards and the score. The distance was good. They're coming with a uh, rollout out of that. Sherman, and it is complete to Derek Hurd. And Hurd with some speed breaks out to the 41 yard line. That's a 22-yard gain, and Sherman to Bird, who at one time was a quarterback. He was switched a year ago by the coaching staff. He's out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. Here they are in a slot formation, two wide receivers. They go zone coverage, roll up in there, just backing off. He reads it. He throws right out there in front of him. Nice throw, corner, giving him a lot of room to catch that football in that zone defense. Bird's off to the right, and Crowell to the left. Couple of tight ends in for the Cavaliers. Brooks slips. Slips up at 38 yard line. So they take a couple yards. Negative yardage on that slip that time with 142 going in the third. Wolverines in need of getting the football back. Trent Zinkowitz did an awfully nice job. Good fundamental defensive line play that time coming inside out on that play. Plus, he's a good, consistent football player. No wonder he was all Big Ten last year. Well, the Cavaliers, and you can tell in talking to Coach Welsh that he was uh, he was optimistic about this year's team. Sherman back, throws complete, and out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Bowens is over there defensively on Crowell. You know, that pattern, concept-wise, wide receiver, short, tight end going corner behind it against that rolled-up zone is the same one they hit the big one after the interception, Brent, that we showed at halftime on the highlight package. A little different action, but same pattern. You have to hold the tight end up better than they're holding him up right now. And that's one of the problems with a 4-3. Sometimes you don't have a guy right on that tight end's nose to hold him up. Now Sherman on third down. Got the first down. 32-yard line. He put the ball in the hands of his fullback that time. Got it done. Jared Irons there. There's one of the big fellows. I think I said fullback, but correct it. Big tight end who has done a job, Dick. You've been talking about that tight end all day. See, and the same pattern. The same pattern. Watch him go to the corner of the right side of your screen. Short pan underneath. Now they got man to man on the linebacker. Real tough coverage. They change up the coverage, but they got him in the mans through the same pattern. Bobby Neely set up the first touchdown of the game with a third down catch for the Cavaliers. Sherman. 
handing off to Brooks, who's to the 25-yard line, and now the Cavaliers are simply starting to eat up some big chunks of yardage here in the Wolverines, bringing it down inside of a minute, and the underdog doing the job here in Ann Arbor, and uh, it's not a way for Coach Carr to start off here in Ann Arbor. He's looking ahead in Illinois down in Champaign next week. Well, Augustino, Rayleigh, Gatlin, Slocum, and Harrison, the offensive linemen, are doing an awfully good job right now of controlling that line of scrimmage. Here they come and blitz. Bobble per now. Kept it. And it was good that he didn't lose the ball because he was bobbling his snap. He could have had it intercepted by the blitzer. Jared Irons was at the point of exchange that time. He was almost took the ball from the quarterback. So that's the end of three, and we'll have more between Virginia and Michigan after this message in a word from our ABC station. More than 100,000 on hand watching the sixth Pigskin Classic and the first ever played on a college campus. Virginia with the ball and a third and six starting the final 15 minutes. Leads Michigan by two touchdowns, 14 to nothing. Back up quarterback Tim Sherman to throw on third down. It should have been intercepted by Charles Woodson, the freshman from Fremont. There is a penalty flag down at the 15-yard line. Woodson let one get away. They were blitzing, so they were in man coverage. They went to the slant pattern, which you should do against the blitz. Woodson covered it perfectly, took the ball and dropped it. Holding on the defense. The penalty gives the Cavaliers first a down. first down. Oh, baby, when it's going bad, sometimes it doesn't stop, Coach. Now remember, this drive started at the 20-yard line against Coach Carr's defense, and it came following an interception by Ellsworth in the end zone, the Cavaliers' second pick of the game. That's something they're noted for. 17 straight games with at least one interception. Now it's Brooks cutting back, and he could not avoid the middle of the defense as number 76, Trenton Zinkowitz, was down there at the bottom along with Jared Irons. With the score 14 to nothing in favor of Virginia, here are the glaring things. First off, Michigan is minus one right here with a turnover factor, and they're not running the ball very well. Give the credit right here. They're running the ball very well, passing the ball very well. They're dominating now in total offense. Now in the heat and humidity, the Virginia coaches hoping to keep that clock running with a two-touchdown lead and on the drive. Here's their unbalanced line again. There's that draw. That'll eat up a little time. They were hoping to gain a few more yards with Brooks that time. This is going to put them in third and long and decision time for the Cavalier coaches. And they see they're not going to try to do anything stupid down here right now. They, they've got the lead, 14 points. They've got a great field goal kicker right now, so they can be a little bit conservative in what they do with the ball. They have a great field goal kicker if you look at his pass. <laughs> well, he missed it. Hey, all kickers miss a few. You know that. Nobody is immune to missing a field goal. <laughs> Did get a chance here, perhaps. His mom came all the way from Barcelona to watch him play. We better make it. Now Sherman steps to the left with the pocket. He's going to run for it, and he will not make it. But it's with Garcia time. But he did increase the percentages of kicking a field goal by moving it up closer. Last year, Garcia was 10 for 11 from within this range, so he only missed one. Yeah, he's a big favorite, and this is a big field goal, by the way. 17 nothing, 13 17 to go. You bet. That's huge. That puts Michigan in that situation where they're going to need three scores. This one's good. And the Garcia family happy again, and so too is Coach Welsh. His Cavaliers lead it by 17. Underdog Virginia leading Michigan in Ann Arbor, 17 to nothing. George Welsh, Lloyd Carr, the different emotions. 
both guts, though, turning the same way in the program right now. The intestines really turning. Toomer and Williams deep for the Wolverines. And they'll kick it short again. And Williams on a big hop at the 16. Dances back down to the 24-yard line. And Dreisbach still the quarterback. And let's check in with Jack Aru. Jack? Well, Brent, all afternoon you've been talking about Rafael Garcia and the fact that his family's from Barcelona. See, Rafael came over to Danville, Virginia as a foreign exchange student in high school, and he never went back to Barcelona. One problem, his family never got to see him play. His dad's been over here, but this is the first time both he, his dad, and his mother have been reunited at a football game, and now he's got three points on the board. I wonder if they've ever been to one of those Barcelona Dragons games, Brent. <laughs> Rafael may wind up kicking for the Dragons. Well, Dreisbach, his return was not greeted favorably by the fans here in Ann Arbor. There were some murmurings in the audience here. They'd like to see a different quarterback out there. I suppose, Dick, that as a coach, you get torn both ways. You certainly don't want to destroy the youngster's confidence. But on the other hand, and there was a Cavalier player down, on the other hand, with Illinois in a big conference game coming up next week, would you want to at least test out one of the quarterbacks here in the second half? Well, I know they had planned to try to get Greasy into the ball game. And now in this situation, down 17 to nothing and, and not being really productive offensively in any way, I don't think you have anything to lose in putting Greasy in there and letting him uh, get, see if he can't stimulate him. I know this. In the scrimmage last week, he picked him up. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. And it's very possible that uh, the youngsters are starting to cramp up a little bit in the uh, heat and humidity. And we know that quarterback Mike Grow and now Percy Ellsworth, who intercepted that ball, you can yeah, wobbly when he gets up over yeah. there and he says, you got to come get me. These yeah. <laughs> calves are just cramping up right now. We understand that. And, of course, Dick, one other thing we understand, our never-ending quest to find the best pizza in the United States, close to a college, you put up a candidate last well, night. Oh, I know it. That, that they were very, very good. Plus, they picked up the check. That makes them even better. That's right. It's free, <laughs> so we want to announce that going in. <laughs> they, but hey, in the Big Ten so far, they might be in the lead. No, 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 I like Columbus, but the cottage in here in Ann Arbor was pretty good. You got right. candidate. How about nice. comparing it with the place in Florida, though? Remember? Oh, oh. No, that was great down there in Gainesville. <laughs> oh. Can't beat pizza on a college campus. Second down and ten now. And Dreisbach back, going deep. Hayes has got it at the 35. And that will pick up the young man's spirits right there. Dreisbach to Hayes, and they beat Barber for 41 yards. Nice going, young man. He threw that perfectly. You'll see they're very in loose zone coverage here with the four deep right now. He's got one and one right here. Takes off. He gets good pass protection. Sets up right there. He's what fit Payton to the outside. The coverage was rolling away from him. Here he goes, throws it perfectly. Good job. Beats Joe Rowe, number 18. Well, those boos quickly turn to cheers, don't they, when you throw a 41-yard pass? First down now at the Cavaliers' 35-yard line. In trouble. Down at the 46 as Anthony Poindexter, the redshirt freshman out of Forest, Virginia, coming hard off the corner that time. A 10-yard loss. See, they bring the safety blitz. Number three, off the corner, Poindexter. They're going to pull a guard to try to get him. And normally you can get it, but when it's a blitz and he gets there that quick, rather than being a linebacker, the quickness of a defensive back, boy, that is tough for a lineman. Marinaro just could not get there. Real good defensive call that time by Rick Lance, the defensive coordinator. Yeah, it's a heck of a coaching staff at Virginia. You know that, Dick? And they've been together for so long, yeah, too. Exactly. They really know what each other's doing. Yeah, exactly. Second down. Drives back. They go one-on-one -on -one once. Hayes again. And this one intercepted, wasn't it? No! Hayes took it away! Oh, what a play, baby! That was Barber! Actually, it was a tie initially, and he just aggressively, aggressively took that ball away on the way down. Again, the long, deep fly pattern going down the sideline, throwing perfectly. He gets the ball, air underneath the ball. It's going to come right down. They both go for it. Mercury Hayes turns on the Mercury, reaches right in there like that. Now watch him wrestle. Take it away. He ends up with the football. If it's a tie, the offense gets it anyway. 
So Eddie Davis and Chris Floyd now check in at running back for the Wolverines. Davis steps to the end zone. And Lloyd Carr will not be shut out in his Ann Arbor debut as the Wolverines slam one in. And there's still time, 11 and a half minutes. You bet. And all through training camp, they've been selling performance in the fourth quarter. Last year, they did not play well in the fourth quarter. They said this year, the one thing we're going to improve is performance in the fourth quarter. Having a running back like Davis right there pick up the slack when your starter is out really helps look good in the fourth quarter. Remy Hamilton attempting the field goal. And Virginia uses a timeout here with Davis replacing the injured Bianca Batuka here in the second half. One of the things that happens with a football team, sometimes the greatest improvement is between the first and the second game. And I'm sure that's got Lou Tepper and his staff just a little uneasy down in Champaign because the Wolverines will have a game regardless of the outcome. They'll have a game under their belts and they're up against a real good coach. And now Welsh says, wait a minute, what are we taking that time out? What, why were we wasting that one out there? They had too many men on the field. Ah. That happens from time to time. Oh. Goes through all of that. Great school like Virginia. They graduate. And I got somebody who can't count to 11. Yeah, and you know something? They have seven graduate students within their starting 22 football players. Very good performance academically. really taking the penalty in case you're wondering because two scores and two extra points twice still makes it 17 16 so if you're wondering why they're going to go ahead and let the kicker <laughs> forget it. forget i even said it forget i even brought it up okay <laughs> just get out the eraser and that's <laughs> one on me why didn't they take that penalty and run for the two what's going on coach just gotta know what to do in that situation come on lloyd we'll be right back <laughs> Well, Feely to kick it off here for Michigan. 11 and a half minutes, 17-6. Brooks and Allen back deep for the Cavaliers. Drills it to Allen, and he's going to come out. And he's free at the 20. Cuts back down at the 34, a fine return. And if you're standing over on the Michigan sideline and your name is Hamilton, you're saying, hand me a Remy. <laughs> Jack Aroot, what's with the name, big fella? Well, Brent, believe it or not, his mother's maiden name was Martin, and she was very fond of that liquor, Remy Martin Cognac. In fact, she named Remy after the libation and still to this day calls him Cognac. But after missing that one, Brent, maybe you ought to be Bud or Goldschlager or Red Dog or something else. Mike Rowe has returned, Jack, at the quarterback. And he hands off on first down. Cavaliers gain about a yard into what could be a pretty fired-up Michigan defense right now with 11-18 to go. You know, the amazing thing about Remy missing that last year, he was All-American, All-Big Ten, number one division, 1A kicker in the country. And he's struggling right now. He's got to fight that through mentally and, and, and lick that problem. Or he won't be kicking. Daryl Medley is the lone running back. They give Bro a fullback. And off a beautiful play fake. But down he goes with Jason Horn, who demonstrated good speed. He was fooled for a fraction of a second and was able to come back on the Virginia quarterback and bury him inside the, well, the defense. The defense has been looking forward to playing in the fourth quarter to redeem themselves from last year. Now, they didn't want to end up in this situation. Jason was an all-Big Ten defensive lineman last year. 94, working off the nose. They didn't block him properly. He's coming inside out of the quarterback. Good movement puts him down for the sack. Mistake in blocking assignment turns him free inside. Crowell and Bird are the wide receiver. Brooks is back in. And he is out to the 32-yard line. But that's going to do it for this sequence. And 
now Mercury Hayes will get an opportunity to touch the football again as the return man. So it'll be Bryce and Hayes now moving center stage at 9.42, and it was Mercury Hayes with two fine 40-yard catches which set up the Wolverine touchdown. That second was a beauty, the way he wrestled that ball away from Barber. Ooh, ooh, great punt. Sometimes you outkick the coverage on a punt like that. He's going to try it. Bumble, Michigan's got it. Wow. It was recovered at the 25-yard line. Andre Weathers came in there and picked that up for him, Brent. Boy. So that's what's coming up next. We'll go to Williamsport in the Little League World Series. Spring, Texas against Taiwan. The Little League Championship presented by Pace. Next here on ABC. Well, now Dreisbach. We'll see if he can ignite another long drive. He's got Davis, Toomer, Hayes out. Gets good time. Comes back to Reno. He battles his way. For Michigan first down, and that one series may have turned this young man's career around. Who knows? I know, you know something, I too. I feel that the defensive linemen, the rushmen for Virginia, are getting tired. And right now, that they're not coming off the ball crisply. They're leaning on offensive players rather than exploding into them. That heat might be wearing them down. Okay. Plus, Reimer's mom was late in getting his head around. Play action pass coming around there, hit the zone down behind the linebacker off that play action. He's got to snap that head around sooner. Otherwise, I think if he gets his head around properly and quickly, he'll catch this football. The left side of your screen, he's just late getting it around. See, if your head is late getting around, you can't get your body around. Your body will follow your head. Second down and 10 for the Wolverines. Davis. Set in behind Floyd at the running back spot. Doesn't get to it. Tumor, and he overthrew him. Tumor was open. He yeah. got a step on Parker. That kind of pattern, you've got to throw a little bit later than he actually threw that one a little too quick because it takes a receiver coming out of a post corner move a little time to come out of it and he threw that just a little too quick they got the coverage they wanted to do they blitzed everybody inside they had one and one all he needed was a little patience in throwing that ball and he has a big play well now it's third and ten for the wolverines the ball at the michigan 36. You know who? Mercury Hayes. First down, Wolverine. See, right now, Reisbach is getting the time to set up and allow the patterns to happen down there. You'll see right here, he gets a real nice pocket for him in there. He gets back here, he sets, he takes his time. They run some stunts up front, trying to get pressure. Big cross charge, it's picked up inside. Nobody around him, nobody has all the time in the world. The rush is getting tired. Mercury Hayes, Dick, now with four catches for 110 yards. He's become the big play man for Dreisbach. That's Hayes in motion. Dreisbach getting protection. Freeman's ball. Three again to the 31 and another Wolverine first down. Dreisbach is getting sharper. But the ball right now he's throwing is different than the ball he threw in the first quarter. It's a crisper throw. It's a tighter spiral. He's gaining confidence. 20 yards. Sometimes when you're tight, Brent, and you start throwing that ball, you try to steer it rather than just swing it. Like, you know, when you're relaxed and swing a golf club like you do, you always hit it better. First down and 10. Still gets it into Hayes' hands. And Hayes is free. Hayes, touchdown, Michigan! Whatever. They'll go for two here.
They ran blitz coverage, so they had single coverage all the way outside. They handled the blitz up inside. You see, going in motion, number nine. Here they're trying to pick them up. Now man-to-man -man downfield. They're playing them a little too loose to be in that kind of coverage situation. Then arm tackling. London does not get it done with his arms. Number five, London's got to get his pads on him. So a spirited rally here by the Wolverines in the fourth quarter. And this certainly gives them a chance. And now, Geisbach will attempt to make this a three-point ball game again if they can convert the two here. Mine is giving him time. Great, Great tackle that time. Joe Blocker makes the stop for the Cavaliers. But Michigan back in it. Fourth quarter, pigskin classic, and a quarterback starts to grow up. 26 year. The Wolverines folks are fired up. Brooks and Allen back deep. Feely has been handling the kickoffs. It's 17 to 12. Virginia leading it by five. The 28-yard line, 7:42. Amazing statistic. Digging out of a 17-nothing hole right now. They made it 17-12. Roy Carr on the sideline cheering them on, and they've been selling this the whole training camp. We are going to be a, a great fourth quarter football team, and so far, that sales position of that, those points are bringing them back Throw, into the low game. Swings Brooks, earns his block, and Brooks slips out to the 37-yard line with Sweat. Bringing it What a great name for a linebacker. Wow, that's a Sweat. sweat. A sophomore out of Chalfont, Pennsylvania. They just got to eat up some clock, do intelligent things with the ball, run a little bit, mix in their play action. They really do a good job with their play action. Now, throw, and this is where an experienced, intelligent quarterback can save the day for you. Brooks battling for that first down may have been stopped short. Jared Irons was right there. We'll see where the ball is spotted. Again, very crisp tackling. This is well short, isn't it? And Steve King now the strong safety. Number 27 down on the field with a cramp. Boy, when they lock up, Brent, it, it really hurts. I've seen players in training camp come into the cafeteria for their evening meal and lock their whole body lock up with cramps. And you've got to go get a stretcher and take them to the hospital. Boy, it hurts. Well, the Pigskin Classic on ABC has been brought to you by Visa. Visa's everywhere that you want to be. State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. The makers of Advil and tablets or caplets and Foot Locker, where it all begins first. Nice to have you along with us. The college season underway a little early. Pick skin. Kickoff tomorrow. Buckeyes. You can compare Ohio State and Michigan. Penn State, of course, will be favored to win it again. And some of the fellows cramping up here. You know, George Wells talking about starting early told me this is the first year ever that they had trouble with players in summer school. Because there was an overlap of one week in training camp starting and the last week of summer school. And he had a number of players miss uh, football practices because they were going to summer school. Well, here comes the third and short. And the Cavaliers loaded up with Medley in front of Brooks. And remember, Groh has shown the ability to sneak right behind the middle of this offensive line. This time, Brooks, as he was falling, handoff, first down, Cavaliers. 
Oh, Groh was fortunate to get that one off, Dick. He was going down on the handoff. Boy, they were lucky they didn't try to run inside that time. There was great penetration by the defensive right tackle that time. He just exploded into the offensive guard and knocked him back. You'll see the penetration right in here. Look at that. The good thing they didn't try to go inside. Great penetration. I can't see the number of the defensive linemen that did it, but I'll tell you, he got off the ball. So now Groh moving the chains and the Cavaliers. Virginia leading Michigan by five. Fourth quarter, daylight for Brooks. Follows an Allen block and crushes into Michigan territory to the 49-yard line. Excellent block by a 5'10", 148-pound wide receiver. See, and also the outside linebacker on that uh, lost leverage on the play. He should not allow that play to bounce outside. It wasn't drawn up to go outside. They didn't want to go outside. Running back bounced outside because there wasn't anyone in the contained position. Now, Brooks will take a break, and the fullback, Medley, will be the lone running back here. Behind Grove, the Cavaliers off the line, defense. and Grove keeps it against that pressure on second and short. Very good offensive drive right now. Yes, the defense has been on the field a lot, and they were running out of gas, but the offense has been sitting over on the bench, resting and drinking some fluids, and uh, they have some life right now, and they can come off the ball. One of the things, if you're a Michigan defensive coach, that has to be bothering you about the missed extra points is the fact that Garcia can make this a 20-12 to 12 game and put you with no better than a tie situation here with 5-20. The Michigan defense needs a stop right here. They cannot allow Virginia to get down into field goal territory. And the offensive coordinators and the staff of Virginia are trying to do exactly that. Big play by Zinkowitz. Big Trent Zinkowitz. He did that a lot last year. 16 tackles for a loss within the Big Ten. Led their conference. Here he goes. Right in here. He's going to get in and get that penetration. Okay, it's a little stunt to the inside. Bang! See? Offensive guard did not have any help on his inside shoulder. It was one-on-one -on -one all the way. Tough to block Zinkowitz one-on-one on that stunt. Another player is down, and so we'll take a break. That's the time remaining, 4.51. Virginia leading Michigan by 5, 17 to 12. And there's a scene for you that our producer, Kim Belton, and our director, Bill Webb, have given you that tells it all about the heat and humidity here in Ann Arbor. And the youngster still warming up on the sideline. Virginia trying to hang on, leading 17-12, 4-40. Throw bringing the clock down. Long count. Time moves. Hand off to Barber. Is that Barber who's checked back in the game? That's number 21, Tiki Barber, who had taken off his pads, has decided that he doesn't want to go back to Charlottesville with a fourth quarter setback. <laughs> he exploded and the last time we saw him, he was dashed into the end zone, right, for 81 yards, separated his shoulder, and now it's 12 carries for 113 yards. Big third down conversion. Rob Sweat did an awfully nice job as an inside linebacker on that last play, Brent. With Virginia offense moving the ball and eating up some clock time that, that allowed the defense to sit on that bench and get a rest. So now it is third down from the shotgun, and uh, the officials hold it up here. One of the back judges threw the flag down there at about the 37-yard line. And this one's going against the Cavaliers. It'll take it back out of Cavalier territory. Well, a delay. Offense. Still third down. Clock will start on the snap. So they didn't quite get it snapped in time. And it's 3.46 remaining. And it looks like the Wolverines, if they can hold on here, are going to get a chance to pull this out. Here's the play defensively. If you're a Michigan fan, you want to stop right here. And if you're a Cavalier fan, you want Groh to find his man. 
throw to the tight end, Neely. And let's see where they put it. It is close. He may have reached out for it at the end. And let's see what happens here. Bobby Neely may have reached out. He's been the big third down receiver. And how about Mike Groh, son of Al, defensive coordinator for Parcells. When in doubt, baby, get it into the hands of Bavaro. Oh, I mean Neely. And move it on down there for a first down. <laughs> Neely's cramping up a little bit, too. Big, big third down oh, conversion. Baby, was that play big. I mean, the Wolverines were drooling. They were frothing over here, thinking they were going to get a chance. And Gro has done it time after time, Dick. Big third down conversion. Set up their first touchdown when he hit Neely. Yes, he did. He did a good job with it last year as well. He, he's a poised guy. He understands what the offense is supposed to do. And he knows where he fits in. And he knows what he's doing when the defense starts changing there in front of him. Good coaching by his quarterback coach, Jim Krivak. It's a team with an idea. And you can see that when you watch them play. I don't think Virginia's going to out-talent you. But I guarantee you, you're not going to out-think them. Jack Garou. Hey, Brett. Yes, sir. I'll tell you what I did on my summer vacation. They don't tell everybody. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, I know which side my bread's buttered on, and I got a set of these for you and Dick. They'll be headed up there, and uh, we can all go to work. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> yeah, but you shouldn't have been wearing that last night when I saw you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Now, there goes $19 billion for the talent. <laughs> All right, 3.29 to go. Can't be fun at the old ballpark, Jack. First down now for the Cavaliers. Who knows? May have done it now. Wolverines need to get that football any way they can. They're going to commit some rush people now. They're coming after the Here it is. Brooks steps back beautifully to the 22-yard line. What a nifty great, run. What a great fake on that play. The fake was so good, the blitzer kept on coming and really started to take on the quarterback, thinking he still had the football. You know, I thought Sherman was a good ball handler when he was in there, Dick. Mm -hmm. And I, that third down pass, because see, now you're getting down into Garcia territory down here. Yes. I mean, you're getting you're getting close enough and getting late enough where that'd be a huge number to put up there on the board. Well, Greg Madison, the defensive coordinator for Michigan, it, it will probably be committing more than the four-man to the rush right now. He'll be uh, trying to load up and get some heat on him. Stop the run as well as rush the passer. Bird and Crowell off to the left for Grove. Here they come. Here they come. He's audible. He sees it. See, they're very tight right now. Now the defense is going to back out. There they are. They're on him, and he'll just take the sack. Sweat stepping right through the hole, bringing him down at the 248 mark. And uh, Grove just wants to take that loss. Didn't want to risk cocking the arm, have it knocked away, and give Michigan the ball. Don't surrender the football in this situation. Michigan will use a timeout here to freeze that clock at 2.48. You can see everybody coming up in there, and they were lined up that way early. He wanted to get out of what he had called, just couldn't get it done. Well, we'll take a break. Virginia leading by five. Michigan desperate to get the football back one more time. Well, a reminder to stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report here on ABC. We'll have a preview of the Little League Championship game coming up. We'll tell you how it all wound up right here in Ann Arbor and tell you about tomorrow's college football, which continues on ABC. Right now, it's third down for the Cavaliers. They lead it by five out of the shotgun. From the blitz. And penalty flag is thrown. It's incomplete. Pass was incomplete, but there is a penalty flag thrown by the referee. So hold on. We'll let Jim Springer sort it on out here. Could have been an illegal shift in that shotgun. Let's see. Illegal shift. Offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. So, 
Here comes the fourth down now. Is fourth and six easier, easier to convert than third and 11? And here comes the putter. This is, now, this is an interesting thing. They've got a little far back. They don't want to block field goal in this situation. So they're going to send on Bryce, who is certainly one of the finest putters in the land. Now, Michigan saved the timeout. They've got one left. I punt. Michigan don't want to get anywhere near that ball. They want the end zone. There it goes. There's a break for the Wolverines. 2.35 and a timeout coming out from the 20. And Welch is furious with that ball bouncing around down there and on into the end zone. I mean, here's a coach about to go nuts if that ball wasn't down in there. I think he could have caught it on the fly. What's he thinking about? <laughs> they work on those things. All the coaches do. Hey, George. He's a coach. Only 35 seasons of experience. Other than that, you know, if he hadn't been around very long. Oh, that'll break your heart when you let a ball like that bounce in. I mean, Bryce hung it up there beautifully. He gave everybody time to get downfield, catch it on the fly, and down it. Now, drive by. Hayes has been his go-to guy. Underneath, Hayes with a diving incomplete. It's ruled incomplete, so it'll be second and ten coming out from the 20-yard line. Reamer's mile was really open on that play action, too. See, that play action's holding people inside, and when you hold them inside, that tight end is so much closer to the quarterback, and nobody around him might as well throw the higher percentage throw. Davis is the running back. Toomer and Hayes. Hayes has certainly been the go-to guy. A hundred-yard day as a wide receiver. Nice back looking in that direction under pressure. Bobbled out of bounds by Hayes. Joe Rose doing a real good job on the coverage over there. He didn't really want to throw it there initially. And Barber right there, number 19 all over him. And, uh, you know, Dick, here's the end of that punt, and this was what infuriated Coach Welsh so much. I mean, there's the ball. I mean, yeah. see, 14 is right there. Yeah. I mean, just run up and catch it. Sammy McCarthy was in yeah. position and couldn't get it done. Yeah. <laughs> but he will be forgiven if <laughs> third down and ten. He will be reminded. Certainly. Nice back. Snaps it off. Reamer's ball makes a move trying to get the first down. Battles for it. Reached out at the end, but he's down. I believe they're going to put that on the 29, a yard short, and the Wolverines are going to have to go. Sharper was there defensively. 2.05 left. Reavers now showing some real mobility. They're making people miss for a big six foot five guy. Yeah, crowd wanted a better spot, but the official was looking right at Reavers his knee over there. And now on fourth down, they'll stop the clock with the first down. And Dreisbach sneaks for it. 144 to go. Michigan has one timeout. Well, that timeout they didn't waste is huge right yeah. now. Yeah. But he's got to be looking here sooner or later for Toomer. He's got both of them out there. You can expect the coverage to be working on Toomer. Mercury Hayes may again be the guy they want to get the ball to because chances are they'll roll that coverage. They like to play that quarter quarter over there to that short to that short side. That's yeah. where Toomer is right now. He's on the short side. Now they're like looking underneath and Toomer bobbling it all the way, but he held on at the 40-yard line. Now they're playing four-quarter defense all the way across. Very conservative, not uh, doubling anybody on that coverage, just making sure no one gets deep. Just short of the first down, so the clock continuing to run now for the young quarterback. And he will stop it right there at the 106 mark. We've got 106. Virginia, remember, up by five points right now. So the Wolverines need the touchdown. Have to go the distance here with 106, and they've got 60 yards left in that critical timeout. These are the tough calls by offensive coach Fred Jackson, quarterback coach Kit Cartwright right now. These are the tough calls. Got to come up with a high percentage throws. You work yourself down there. You got to score the touchdown. You're down by four. Butterfield is slotted to the quarterback's left. Tumor is off to the right. 
the short side of the field. Weisbach back over the middle. Got it at the 39 in the Hayes hands. Stops the clock while the chains are reset. 59 seconds to go. The young quarterback driving the Wolverines again. Defensively, now they've got to tighten up that coverage. See, they're all dropping off, playing very, very loose. Quarter, 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 all the way across the field. He called the play. It looked like it looked like a timeout, but he was not signaling timeout. He will stop the clock that way because Michigan must save that timeout as much as they can. They'll go now to second and ten inside the Cavaliers' 40-yard line. And Hayes has really stood up here for Coach Carr. What a debut for him. Soaking wet. That, that call right there, he's asking for the signal. It looks like a quarterback calling timeout. Now it's second and ten, remember. Toomer and Butterfield are off to the right. Hayes comes down to the left. Hayes underneath, back to Reamers ball. Reamers ball, I believe, got the first down. Clock is stopped. Close to the 25-yard line. 49 seconds to go now. And a wonderfully conceived play. Hayes brought double coverage back on the inside, and they went into Reamer's Maw, who had one on one. Good read, Grant. Good read, because that's exactly what they did. He wanted to go to Mercury Hayes. They doubled him, so he worked back inside to the tight end. Good protection allowed him to take the time to get it there. Completed pass. If they elect now to use the timeout, things were working so well, and they had saved that timeout. If you're a Michigan fan, you hate to see that right now. But you'll see what we're talking about here. Bottom of your screen, they're going to double down here on Mercury Hayes. He wants to throw there. It's not there. He moves back to the inside, finds Reamer's Ball, working back away from the linebacker, and they get the first down. Good boy. Dreisbach has, has grown up in this second half. He's not steering his throw. He's firing his throw. He's throwing with confidence. Biggest decision, and the one that may turn out in the long run to be the best, is Coach Carr sticking with the young man under yep. fire. He liked what he saw. He didn't make a change. And now, 25 of 46, 348 yards. He's thrown for one touchdown and those costly two interceptions, which are the difference in this football game. That's why Bro and the Cavaliers are ahead. You see, and, and Virginia can't get any pass rush right now. They're a little bit tired with that defensive line. So what do you do to get a pass rush? You commit linebackers. When you commit linebackers, you end up on one-on-one -on -one coverage. They don't want to be in one-on-one -on -one coverage. They're really in, in, in a tough spot right now. Dreisbach has Hayes and Toomer both on the same side. Butterfield down the bottom, isolated. They look down at one and they put it in his hand. And he scoops close to the 15-yard line. Clock is moving. Dreisbach taking a signal from the coaches. Yell at him, get him in there. He's called it right now on the sideline. He's cool, but he needs to still move it. No timeouts. And this is no time to be wasted. Pressure time. defense, here they come. Picked up. Lobs one, end zone, Reamers Maw can't get to it out of the back of the end zone. 21 seconds to go. He saw the defense, he saw the blitz, he knew he had the one-on-one, -on -one, but there was contact by the defender in Reamers Maw, and he couldn't come out of the break and accelerate and get to that ball. So the officials now will reset it with 21 seconds to go. Virginia. Leading on rushing Michigan by five. Wolverines must have the touchdown to pull this one out. It'll be third and inside of a yard right now. But the touchdown's what's important here. He's got to go get that first down. And he had to battle for it at that. He needed to get past the 15-yard line. But that does, in college football, stop the clock momentarily while they reset things. Dreisbach looking over. So they're going to bring it out and measure. The measurement should give the young quarterback who may have taken a lick on that quarterback sneak. The way he's bending over down there. Okay, they got three, three, 
three shots at it at the most, Brent, with the 18 seconds. 18 seconds and three plays. Need the touchdown. They don't want to run any slow type passes, any bootlegs or waggles. They want to get back and throw the ball in that five step rhythm. Great. Small the intended receiver. He got exactly what he wanted. One and one coverage. You gotta complete that one. Remus Ma had an outside position on the strong safety Ellsworth. All he has to do is throw the strike. He's got the play. A lot of pressure for your first start in your career as a college freshman. Yes, redshirt freshman, but he didn't get to play last year. This young man has attempted 49 passes today. The most previously in the Michigan book is 47 by Dick Bidmar, and for yards, 357, that eclipses the previous record, too. And now he's trying to pull it out, fire high, Thor couldn't get it. So now it is third down. You know, that was that zone coverage again. They ran the short pattern outside, tried to get the corner pattern in behind him. Everybody dropped. He should have thrown the ball to Mercury. Hayes out there, and, it, and Mercury's coming back and doing him and letting him know that. Eight seconds remaining. Third and ten. Reamers Ma, Hayes, and Toomer. And Howard has been doing a good job as a bodyguard in that backfield. They put uh, Toomer, Toomer now over to the short side of the field opposite a trip set. They trying to get the one-on-one -on -one to him. Middle. Dropped it. It's fourth and ten for seconds. It's come down to this in the opener. Jerome Butterfield, a freshman, redshirt freshman, playing in his first ball game. Mishawaka, Indiana. Scott Dreisbach, the redshirt freshman. and their fans, here it is. Loves it, Hayes is there! Out the end zone! Touchdown! They give it to him, he has one foot in! He's got it! Fourth down! Scotty Dreisbach has pulled it out! This baby's over! in Michigan football history. They were down to Virginia, 17 to nothing. A heartbreaker for Coach Welsh and the Cavaliers. This is a regular season game. I don't leave the field, and I'll tell you why in a moment, folks. If we want to take a look at this. Hayes obviously kept one foot in bounds. That's the college rule. He makes the post move, got the corner to bite on it, going outside it. Ball coming over the outside shoulder. One more look. Rondé Barber took the bite on the post move to the inside. He came out of it, threw it perfectly. The ball coming over the shoulder for the flag. He has the ball. His left foot is in the green. Now, I have a big question here. If I'm Virginia, I want this extra point attempted. I can score two points off a muff extra point of some kind. Remember that. You They're get off the points. field. They're so finally they leaving. The ref is still down. Let's get this all sorted out. Uh, Jack and Ruth, what do you hear down there? Well, Brent, the first thing that Lloyd Carr checked with were the officials. Wanted to know the status of this game. He said, is it over? According to the umpire, who spoke directly to Coach Carr, he said, if the opposing coach leaves the field, then it's considered over. We're looking for Coach George Welsh. He has left the field. Now there's some question as to whether they will continue for the point after or call it a no, game. No, the, the rule is this year, if the visiting, if the losing team
team walks off the field, the point after does not have to be kicked. Now, Welsh left late. We should point that out. Because of the celebration on the field, they may not have seen it. Now, I want to watch Hayes drag this foot. This is critical. One foot has to be inbounds. Watch the right. Yeah, that left one, it's in. Hey, that left one, one, he got left the left one, one in. Right there. Left one in. Now, they're still talking. Let's Virginia see. has elected not see? to try the try for point. The game is over. There it is. Michigan has pulled it out. 18-17 is the final score. Jack, you got to be with the happiest coach in the world right now. Take it away. You can see the bedlam and the pandemonium. The important thing, I talked to Coach Carr, and the one thing is he was so excited. But guys, the one thing he wanted was for us to talk to the players. He said, it's not important what I've done. It's important what Michigan Wolverine football and the individual players have done. Back to you. Jack, I must tell you, I remember last year when our colleague Keith Jackson was here, and I happened to be watching, and I watched the most painful defeat, certainly one of the most painful in the history of Michigan football, and that was when Colorado pulled it out on a Hail Mary. Well, this will not erase that memory completely, but it certainly is a wonderful way to start building a new tradition. As Scott Dreisbach, a redshirt freshman, Drives the Wolverines 80 yards in 16 plays and two and a half minutes, trailing 17 to nothing. Drives by, throws more passes than any quarterback in history, for more yardage than any quarterback in Michigan history. And the Wolverines have come back from their greatest deficit ever. I know it's only the start, and it's a non-conference, but what a start this is for Lloyd Carr and the Michigan Wolverines. And next week, you can follow the champagne. Damian Rice against Scott Dreisbach. What a game that'll be. The Little League World Series is coming up. Dick Vermeil, Jack Arun, I'm Brent Musburger. So long, everybody.